understand and acknowledge there are some strong feelings about the design, but please keep in mind that none of the proposed changes, in fact, take away from the components of the existing POPs elements the, current, the com community currently enjoys. These enhancements will not only benefit the building, but serve the entire community, and in most cases, these figures are either increased or enhanced. The total area and public seating in linear feet increased. The connection to the subway. I am sorry, Chris. We are doing two minutes for everyone. If there is someone else who would like to continue your presentation, we have a lot of people signed up to speak. So um, feel free to pass it to the next uh, presenter. Um, again, Diane Dicharo will be next after that. Diane? Uh, Diane DeCharo, if you are online, please raise your hand because I see you signed up. There we go. I see you as a dial-in user. Let's unmute her. Unmute the dial-in user. Hi, I'm Diane DeCharo. I am the owner's rep for 70 Pine and 20 Exchange downtown in the financial district. And am I unmuted? No, you're fine. Keep going. Okay. So I represent 20 Exchange, 70 Pine for the owner's rep. We are in very much support of this especially because of the downtown and the residential area and the retail that supports it. Having this atrium and having 7,500 people go into this building will support financial districts, not only the retail, but residential. And it will, it will make the bid and everything else thrive. It will bring back downtown Manhattan, and we are in complete support of it. This will be an unbelievable transformation for the entire financial district. Thank you. Okay, um, Tim, can we get her to clarify the, the owner that she's referring to, the name of the com company? Uh, there are a few places. Rose so it's Rose Associates. Rose Associates is part owner of 70 Pine with DTH. Rose Associates is the managing agent for 20 Exchange and ownership is DTH Capital. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for speaking. Um, looking through the public session to ensure that we do have everyone. Um, Elizabeth Goldstein, you are going to be next. Let's move Elizabeth over. Elizabeth, you are now a panelist. You should be able to unmute yourself when you're ready. Welcome to Community Board One. Thank you very much. My name is Elizabeth Goldstein. I'm the president of the Municipal Arts Society of New York. We appreciate the opportunity to share this um, oral testimony with you this evening. We appear to express concern about the proposed modifications to 60 Wall Street's covered pedestrian space. Our first and most important concern is that the, uh, this application is moving forward, even though the Landmarks Preservation Commission has determined that 60 wall and its covered pedestrian space merit consideration as a landmark. If this modification were approved in its current time frame, it would obviate the possibility of landmarking. The second concern is the modifications change the nature of the originally authorized C CPS in ways that are, in our view, detrimental to the use of the space. It reduces the effective area of the C uh, CPS because of the way the subway access has been 
redesigned. Instead of an aspect of the space, it has become its dominant feature, taking much of the western wall of the CPS. The previous entrance was clear, but did not control the central position. In addition, the elimination of multiple small vendors in favor of a large one means that the CPS tone will be set by that business, not by a group of smaller businesses. That single business also projects into the central circulation corridor, creating more of a linear pedestrian corridor between it and the larger subway entrance. It is also unclear if the required storefronts along Pearl and Wall Street will remain. Lastly, overall all the design of the CPS reads more corporate than the current one does. We are concerned that it will be seen as less welcoming, diminishing the use as, quote, a sheltered space for the comfort and convenience of the general public as required by ZR 74853. Thank you for this opportunity to address you, and I um, appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh the opportunity to come with us on a busy night. All right, um, next we're going to go to Frampton Tolbert. And after Frampton Tolbert, we're going to do Alice Blank. And do I have anybody else in the room here live who is here for 60 Wall? I'm here, but I'm not planning on speaking. Thank you. And Connor. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Tolbert. Yes, can you hear me? Thank you so much. Great. Uh, my name is Frampton Tolbert. I'm the executive director of the Historic Districts Council. We are the city wide advocate for New York's historically, culturally, and architecturally significant spaces, buildings, and neighborhoods. I'm here this evening to register HTC's opposition to the current proposal for modifications to 60 Wall Street's POPs and ask the full board to uphold the resolution of the Land Use Zoning and Economic Development Committee. As a citywide preservation organization, our foremost concern is that this process is moving forward despite the fact that the Landmarks Preservation Commission has determined that 60 Wall Street and its pop and its CPS merits further consideration as a possible New York City designated landmark. If this modification were to be approved in its current time frame, it would remove the possibility of protecting the space before the LPC has issued its final determination. The Department of City Planning must communicate with the LPC to understand the ramifications here. In addition, the need for improved lighting in the space noted in the proposal has already been largely addressed by the Landmarks Preservation Commission, who approves changes to the facade, allowing more light to penetrate the space. Additional lighting improvements on the interior can now be made without removal of the significant features. However, setting aside the need for the LPC to complete its evaluation, we believe the application does not meet the merits as it should not be considered an improvement on the existing design for several reasons. In terms of ZR 74-873, the useful role and comfort and convenience are both diminished by a proposed reduction in overall full public floor area and reduction in retail from five vendors to one. Landscape features are objectively diminished in square footage, and instead a green vertical wall will count towards the landscaping floor area, which we disagree with. The only increased amenity is the number of movable chairs and tables. The second concern is that the modification changes the nature of the originally authorized CPS in ways that are detrimental to its use. It reduces the effective area of the CPS because of the way the subway access has been redesigned and the previous and the previous entrance was clear but did not take control of the central position of the CPS. The space becomes narrow with the insertion of a staircase and a large decorative enclosure around the retail space, making it more like a passageway than a gathering space. Overall, we do not find this proposal to meet the criteria as an improvement. I apologize. We do need to cut you off. We are holding to two minutes for everyone. I appreciate very much the time, and I so apologize about having to meet both you in person this evening. All righty. Let's move to our next speaker it will be Alice Blank and Alice, I'm holding you to two minutes and then we're going to go to um, Connor Allerton from the council member's office. All right. My name is Alice Blank, architect and vice chair of Manhattan Committee Board 1. The New York Times published an article Friday entitled New Yorkers got broken promises. Developers got 20 million square feet, which highlighted the chronic and unjust lack of maintenance of the city's 598 cops. 60 Wall Street was one of the 50 pops cited with violations. With this in mind, it is laudable the owners have embarked on investing in the renovation of this wonderful historic building, which has long been neglected. 
There is little question the state of commercial real estate in New York is dire, and it's critical to support all efforts at revitalization. In the case of 60 Wall Street, the comprehensive re renovation is currently well underway, ensuring the modernization of the building, offering many calls for jobs in the construction industry. 60 Wall Street is not like any other office building in New York City. It is considered by all New York City preservation and good government leaders, many of whom we've just heard from, to be worthy of consideration as a New York City landmark. In New York Magazine's cover story this month, dedicated to the commercial office space crisis, 60 Wall Street is noted for, and I quote, much mocked but now beloved postmodern atrium. Earlier this year, New York's LPC, Landmark Preservation, rejected the applicant's proposed exterior modifications, requiring the applicant to maintain the historic postmodern columns and facade, in keeping with CB1's resolution. It is only logical to maintain the building's historic interior atrium, which, if modified, would be a complete odd with the building's now postmodern exterior. Rather than support the wasteful demolition of the existing atrium and its reconstruction as a nondescript office lobby, the building owner should look to the future by capitalizing on the past. With a simple interior renovation, 60 Wall's unique atrium could become a revered tourist destination, much like that of its original architect's other landmark interiors in New York City, the Masterful Ford Foundation and the United Nations Plaza Hotel Lobby and Restaurant. I very much hope CB1's full board will support the Land Use Committee's resolution, which urges at a minimum for LPC to review this property before it goes to CPC for consideration. Thank you. I wasn't really sure how to cut you off in the room. I <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. Anyway, thank you. That was an express train. That, that was definitely an express train. So thank you so much. Um, Connor Allerton from Councilmember Marquez's office. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak I'm here on behalf of Councilmember Marte to reiterate our opposition to the proposed modifications of the City Wall Street box. Um, the council member strongly believes that this is a unique public space deserving of landmarking and that minor improvements, new vendors, and better maintenance is what the space needs, not with that renovation into a cookie cutter corporate law. The council member and many advocates and experts concerned with the proposed changes have pointed to ways that developers improvements actually diminish pedestrian circulation, landscaping features and amenities, retail diversity, and the amount of space truly open to the public. Pitches for ADA subway access, more seating, and better lighting are incomplete or exaggerated. Our office is supportive of the committee's resolution against the proposed modifications and encourages the full board to pass the resolution tonight. Thank you. Is that what you want? Encourages the pass, yeah. We're supportive of the, the uh, resolution, which is drafted as a no which opposes yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Connor. Thank you, um, everyone, for that topic. Seeing no other um, people signed up for that topic, we're going to move on to some of the others that we have. Uh, Esther, since you are here, we're going to have you go next. Thank yes. you. Um, I'd also like my friends, uh, Neil Jacobson and Kathy Moore, to join me, and we can all speak as a group, and they can fill in the holes. Perfect. Okay. How many, uh, since it's three of you, you think you could we'll try to keep it under six minutes? Maybe I was four or five is yeah. ideal. <laughs> I'll introduce myself first. I'm Esther Riegelson. I live at 109 Washington Street in the heart of the old little Syria neighborhood that has been erased uh, from history because of two acts of eminent domain and the overdevelopment of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also representing Friends of the Lower West Side Road Preservation. And for years, from the very beginning, Friends of the Lower West Side and Washington Street Historical Society, represented by Linda Jacobs here, has been working with the Parks Department, the artists, and even the parks designer since way before when the redesign of the park was first proposed. We met with George Velanakis, the designer, and his design incorporated features such as the central graphic mound to accommodate sculptural elements as proposed by the artist and the parks department. Over the ensuing years, many compromises had to be made to accommodate the infrastructure of city, electric, sewer lines, waterworks, etc. So we made multiple compromises to that effect. And recently in CD1, after we met with them, uh, accommodations were made uh, and accepted favorably to those changes that were made. Um, the proposal was always intended to be a permanent insulation 
Uh, Washington Street Historical Society has provided money and resources for permanent upkeep to the installation. So we're not worried about money and upkeep. There are three elements to the latest proposal. There are two benches that will have artistic mosaic backrest that are only an addition to pre existing seating with no backrest. So basically, a backrest is added with beautiful mosaic design. The other element is a sculptural, sculptural element that will be on the grassy central mound that is partially inaccessible to the public and only inhabits a small portion of the mound. So it's really not intrusive to the park in our view, although some people and the resolution has stated a little bit to the contrary. And I do want to point out that in spite of the meeting last week, there are certain things in the reso that are a little off. It states that their benches will be removed, and that is not the case. It says that sight lines will be obscured, and that is not the case. So I just want to make that clear. And that's my statement. And if Kathleen and Linda want to add anything, please do. I'm, I'm a, the, the chair of the Washington Street Historical Society, the sponsoring agency for the Elizabeth H. Berger Plaza Park installation. and. I obviously for it. I think it's a beautiful addition to Lower Manhattan. I think the idea of the mosaics with the name with the poetry from the 19th century and early 20th century poets of Little Syria, which was on Washington Street, just one block away from where the park is now, um, are excerpts from some of those famous poets like Khalil Gibran, Elia Abumadi. And the sculpture will have in it embedded in the mosaics the names of all of the writers and the poets of the literary of flowering that took place on Washington Street in the in the 19th and early 20th century. It's going to be an incredible um, addition to Lower Manhattan. We're also going to have an augmented reality app that will explain both the history of the Little Syrian community as well as the art itself and have the translations and excerpts from from the excerpt from the poetry. So I would urge you to to vote for the installation of the art into the in the Elizabeth H. Berger Plaza. I'm Kathleen Moore and I've lived down here for more than 50 years. Um, uh, about three blocks from where the park is. Uh, and I've watched it um, take shape from the time the parks department got involved, which was before anybody saw that as a park. It was three pieces of um, indiscriminate land um, around exits to a battery, battery park. Um, battery battery park. Tunnel. Yeah. Um, so it is now looking very beautiful. It has a sculpture which is in several pieces and it's abstracted um, language. So we need not be able to read it. We need only to appreciate it. Um, it's a very cheerful and upbeat addition to our neighborhood. Our neighborhood has become the home of, um, how shall I say it, morose um, um, memorials to <laughs> great tragedies in history. The tragedy of this is that it was erased by, by land use um, programs by the government, but it really, the, the, the people uh, spread into the community. It's been the private, um, immigrant community that spread throughout our community. Uh, yeah. And um, I think it's a very good celebration of that. I would like to say that um, the resolution doesn't fully um, explain the amount of interaction between the Parks Department, between the Historical Societies, and between um, the Community Board. They've been working with the Community Board for years, and I think that we are probably about finished with what needs to be done with the community board. We get going on this beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. memorial. Ten seconds. <laughs> oh, so, so was that five minutes? You know, okay. yes. Time. They are supporting the sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And our resolution support the sculpture. Our resolution supports the sculpture, but includes what the community feels are a couple of inaccuracies. Um, that's what I want to yeah. let's, let's talk about it when we get there. Okay. I just yeah. wanted to have a break. Yep. We've got, we, we still have many more people who would like to opine this evening. So let's keep on going.
And apparently Desi does not like the bugs in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, next, uh, do we have anybody else in the room who is talking about Elizabeth Burger Park and the art installation? Seeing none, we're going to go to Todd Fine, who is online. And then, let's see who else is on this topic. I apologize. Uh, Linda Jacobs, you're in the room, right? Yeah, so. So I think the next person is just Todd Fine online on this topic. Can you hear me? Welcome. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, yes. I just wanted to um, say that uh, I'm I'm Todd Fine. I'm the president of the Washington Street Advocacy Group, which also advocates on Little Siri, and I was involved in these discussions over the years. And I think that the the final design is a good, reasonable design. It seems like it was was already involved compromise from the community board. Um, there was good faith efforts. And I was attended the last, I haven't seen the proposed resolution, but I got the sense at the meeting that there weren't any big complaints and there weren't, wasn't consensus. So if there are things that are controversial in the resolution, I'd like to know them, but maybe it's too late. But I, I just want to say overall, I think it, people should be proud of it and they should do everything to support it. And I commend the mayor for finally getting it done, especially when there's a lot of other monument things that he has on his plate. Okay. Thank you very much, Todd. Um, next, we're going to go to Roger Manning. And after Roger Manning, Stephanie Mercado Altman. Hi, folks. I'm Roger Manning from Magic, the Metro Area Donors Island Coalition. And um, I was at the uh, presentation from the Trust and Stony Brook last week to your committee about uh, the Kind Center in Governors Island. Due to, public in, due to public input, including two meetings with Magic, Stony Brook's current plan seems less intrusive than earlier versions. But at 145 feet and 80 feet, uh, their signature building dwarfs any other structures on the island and is twice the height of nearby Overlook Hill or Outlook Hill. The signature building could easily be lower and uh, retain its distinctive shape without dominating the island. The building height, as you know, on Governor's Island is, uh, is a key concern of the public. With Stony Brook structures potentially dominating and the trust's stated goal of making Governor's Island a quote, global leader in climate research, they are effectively defining the island's primary purpose as a research campus over all other public usage. But the deed has a better definition of government job and greater or extensive if you like, in terms of how it benefits the public. It's important to note that the current plan only uh, for the climate center only uses 25% of the development zones in government zone. The other 75% would involve future RFPs, all of which would be permitted to be high rise, non academic, and commercial. The current Article 78 lawsuit from the 2021 zoning on Governor's Island wouldn't prevent having a climate center. Both of the zoning's excessive features aren't really needed for that climate center project. 15 seconds. So we're not saying not to put stuff in Governor's Island. We're just saying let's look at the deed and, uh, and address concerns that we've been concerning all along. And uh, Governor's uh, Magic has actually had a lot of support from a lot of groups around the city. In fact, the final statement includes Council Member Christopher, uh, Christopher Marte has signed on, signed on to that before the election. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roger. Thank you very, very much. Um, moving along to Stephanie Mercado Altman. I think Stephanie is online. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie Mercado Altman. I am the a community engagement manager here with New York City Smoke Free at Public Health Solutions. Um, and just wanted to uh, talk to you all tonight about our program here. Um, so we are a program that uh, we protect the health of New Yorkers through tobacco control, uh, policy, advocacy, and education. We partner with community members, legislators, and health advocates to support local efforts to end the de devastating tobacco epidemic throughout New York City. And our mission is really to increase tobacco-free norms throughout the city where people live, work, and play. 
Um, so through this, our community efforts really include collaborative neighborhood-based efforts that um, where we work with community businesses or community um, entities to establish and pass tobacco-free outdoors policies. So really designating an outdoor perimeter outside of the physical establishment to be smoke-free. Um, in the light too, we also work with buildings to help them go smoke-free. Um, so all of our services are free also just for the community uh, so that everyone has access to this work. Um, and, you know, we can make an equitable solution for tobacco-free lives. Um, in part with that too, uh, another prong of our program is working with youth um, throughout New York City, ages 13 to 18, to participate in our program called Reality Check. Um, where they really become peer health advocates uh, to promote tobacco-free living amongst their peer groups as well. Um, we are funded by the New York State Bureau of Tobacco Control. And again, we wouldn't charge a, a teen or any sort of uh, person interested in, you know, working with us. So um, we'd love to touch base with you. You can feel free to look us up at NewYorkCitySmokeFree.org. Um, and my email is saltman at healthsolutions.org. So look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Have anyone who has signed up to speak for the public session who I have not called upon as yet? Seeing none in the room, and let me see if I see any hands online. I do not. Okay, so with that note, we are going to and close our public session at 6 50. Seeing none, correct. We open our public hearing at 6 50 and close it at 6 50 because we have had no one sign up for the public hearing about budget consultant. And the one thing I will remind everyone, budget season is upon us. So think clearly over the summer and please do not forget that we do need your ideas from municipal expense and capital budget priorities to list. So if you don't have it tonight, don't worry. We'll be redoing this public session in September. So thank you very much. With that, I will close the public hearing at 651. A reminder for all those who are members of the public who are in the room with us, once we start our business session, which is the next step in a community board meeting, the public is not recognized unless authorized by the chair on the topic. So we welcome you to stay, but I ask that you not shout out unless recognized by the chair in the room. All righty. With that note, let's go to the adoption of the June 2023 minutes, and that'll be a roll call vote to start the business session. Amy. A. Uh, Amaruso. Said. Blank. Blank, yes. Uh, Brown Kennedy. Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you. Cassell? Yes. Thank you. Bang? Yes. Thank you. Chapman? Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian, yes. Thank you. Cole? Cole, yes. Thank and you. Mark Amoroso, there's a correction. He would like to say that he was here last at the last meeting. Oh, for the minutes? For the minutes. Okay. We will adjust the minutes to reflect Thank his you. partial participation. Thank you. <coughs> Jess? No. Foreman? Excuse me. Kucha? I'm present and yes. Thank you. Curtis? Curtis, yes. Thank you. Chairman? Yeah. Oh, Bruce? Yes. Chairman, yes. Forrest? Woodford? Woodford, yes. Friedman? Uh, Roman. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Grayson? Grayson, yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Uh, Duke? Yes. Thank you. 
Andrew? No. Uh, okay. Thank you. Canal? Canal, yes. Thank you. Go, Paul. Werner? Werner, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Lynn? Carter? Lion? Lion, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Meltzer. Meltzer, yes. Thanks. Minsley. Minsley, yes. Yeah. Thank you. More? More, yes. Thank you. Kendia? Uh, uh, Portia Corey? Portia Corey, yes. Thank you. Robinson? Robinson, yes. Thank you. Rossi? Rossi, yes. Thank you. Sheer? Yes. Thank you. Star? Star, yes. Thank you. Fair song. Fair, yes. Thank you. Thompson. Thompson, yes. Thank you. Townley. Bob. You. Thank you. Seltzer. Seltzer, yes. Thank you. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Okay. That's the adoption of the June 2023 minutes. With one caveat note for reflecting Mark and Marissa's attendance at the last meeting. Um, updates from our elected officials in the room. I we want to say thank you to those who showed up in the room. And Tevin, you go first. Thank you so much. This is my uh, second ever community board meeting <laughs> in my entire life in government. So this is awesome. <laughs> it's so nice to see all of you. I'm Tevin Williams, the director of community and external affairs for Congressman Goldman. Um, I just want to mention three quick things that happened. The biggest is uh, the Democrats have put out their first uh, landmark bill for this upcoming session, and Congressman Goldman's early voting act was included in that. And in the Senate, it is S2, meaning that it is the second most important bill uh, that they will prioritize for this. It is the early voting act, and fun fact, uh, Florida is ahead of a lot of us when it comes to counting votes. And we are, this bill will actually mandate that election officials start processing and scanning ballots as soon as they are um, delivered back. So if you mail in your ballot, it will be scanned and entered. Second thing is I would like to say is that we led a letter um, with 17 other members of Congress, uh, with lawyers, federal prosecutors, judges, um, to create an ethics council on the Supreme Court. Um, as many of you know, there have been some crazy decisions that have come out. And the Supreme Court is the only judicial body that does not have an ethics council or a standard for ethics, unlike the circuit courts and the district level courts. So the congressman has called for an establishment of that and an ethics council to advise the Supreme Court. And then finally, something that kind of hits home here, as many of you know, there are many people suffering from mental illness on the streets. We've co-sponsored a bill with Senator Gillibrand um, called the Strengthening Medicaid for Serious Mental Illness Act which will support individuals with serious mental illness, schizophrenia, bipolar, uh, and major depressive disorder. And this will create a package of services under Medicaid, which will be wraparound services for everyone that applies for them. If you have any questions for me, let me know. But again, thank you for having me. Happy to take any questions. There's any, oh, I see hands up already. Mm. We're gonna start with Eric and then Justine. No, no, I wasn't waiting to my hand, I was saying thank you. Oh, yeah. Eric? Um, yeah. What? What is Dan's position on congestion pricing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the negative impact on, on the New York City economy where people and businesses will choose not to make uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think, think we have any sense of like an official statement of what we will do, but we will support testimony. So if you have any things you'd like to send us to the office, just reach out and know your mind's really powerful. Oh, we, 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 we have resolutions, so we would be happy to share yeah. with you our perspective. Yes, yeah. really so yeah. no. Yes, and that would be my comment. Okay. Uh, Alice and then Dr. K. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I just wanted to ask for some follow up. Um, whether now or in the near future, on the West Side Resiliency Task Force that yeah. we Congress will really so so we we're, we're setting up a date for that, and so when everything will be going forward. Oh, terrific! Since everyone is out of town in August. <laughs> okay. All right, great to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Set this. I'm glad to hear about the coverage in Medicaid for people with severe mental illness. Yeah. Is there any comparable 
coverage for that with Medicare? Because as you know, there are many people who just above the threshold of Medicaid yeah. who still can't afford care. Yeah. Would they be covered or are they already covered? I'm not sure that I can follow up with you on that. And I know they're planning on addressing the Medicare and the budget or the appropriations of the, the conversation. Yes, I hate to see that group excluded. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. I'll follow yeah. up with that. I gotcha. Wendy? So, yeah, I was going to just commend um, addressing the, the severe mental health issues on some of the homeless folks in New York. It is something that I'm so glad to hear that there's something we've done. Like you said, for people who signed up, well, how will people that are severely mental, mentally ill be shepherded through the sign-up process? Because mm -hmm. I think that's part of the problem is that they're, you know, there's just a million ways for it not to work. Right. And um, these things take time, and there, there's a lot of forms, and there's a lot of verification, and all this kind of stuff. And I think those are the the same folks that they just they need someone to advocate for them, and yet I'm sure they're they don't have anyone to advocate for them on a you know it's just too difficult. Yeah. So I'm just curious how I mean we don't have to talk about it now, but I'm sure you've thought about that because that's the problem. Yeah. It's for anyone, and I think the biggest thing is our community partners that we work with. They're the ones that kind of go out and do the outreach. Like on the west side in community number two, they have Granite House, which does a lot of work with Washington Square Park, with providing those services and going and doing the outreach there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I mean, if someone is not able to get those services, like whether they fall on the crack. So they got that too. Does anybody else have any other questions for Kevin in the room? Uh, not seeing any hands raised by board members online. Thank you very much, Tevin. Um, and next we move to Fanny from assembly member Lee's office. Yes. Hi. So there, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, we just saw you. <laughs> Hi again. Yeah, that was first, uh, first, before you go, I will say for the entire board to know a huge thank you to Assembly Member Lee Absolutely. and Senator Kavanaugh. Yes. They arranged the first community engagement with the SLA chair, the brand new SLA chair, and included all, um, you know, the opportunity to go. So, um, right before this meeting, mm -hmm. Pat and I went to say hello and introduce our basically thoughts and concerns about um, community board one and educator a little bit. So that opportunity was rare and highly appreciated. And please, thank you, Chair. Just to give a quick update, um, um, you really can't yell as an ambulance here, but they both tied up Well, can you hear me now? Yeah. Danielle had her baby. So oh, congratulations. Had a healthy. Um, what is this? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> eight pounds, 13 ounce ounces. Yes, sir. Oh, baby girl, healthy girl. All right, so, um, the legislative session ended over a month ago. Um, so our office is focusing on, um, community support, um, outreach and connecting constituents to resources and services. Um, we have started tabling throughout the district. Um, so, if you guys have any ideas on what corners or locations that's good for us to table, let us know. And, you know, we'll be out there with the table and, and some, you know, materials to give out to the constituents. Um, so, we will be doing, we will be doing this throughout the summer, throughout the district, and hopefully we'll be able to post these locations and dates soon. Um, some of the recent happenings, um, we have, just as Tammy mentioned, um, we had our meeting with um, Lily, SLA new commissioner, Lily Tan. Um, so this is, we were really excited. This is the first of the community meetings. So hopefully we will be able to do more with different communities. So um, yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, we have we have a whole army of interns right now, some interns, mm -hmm. and um, we have a, we are sending them out to do surveys and stuff like that. And one of the surveys we're doing right now is to have them go block by block, block to look at the and what needs to be cleaned up. So again, you know, if you have any ideas that for our interns to be busy, uh, to do surveys and stuff like that, definitely let us know. We have a lot of interns. <laughs> um, 
So um, we did a couple of uh, NYCHA walkthroughs. Um, not so much in this district, but I'm um, just to let you know we we you know we heard the community. You know we did a walkthrough with Grace and also like member from um, Sam Goldman's office and Kavanaugh's office. Um, we walked through a couple of complexes to listen to the residents' concerns and everything. Um, so. Yeah, um, we're getting ready for our next legislative session. So, if you have any ideas, concerns, that can let us know. Um, we don't have any immediate events on the radar, but um, we definitely will be Thank you very, very much. Does anybody have one? So, I have an idea for your interns. Um, one of the things that I keep talking about is trying to um, create bite sized videos um, about topics that we care about in the neighborhood. I'm, of course, focused on resiliency and waterfront parks and education, but um, especially with the resiliency issue, they all know, you know, the heat island issues, the uh, global warming and the rise and, you know, all of those things. But what New York City is lacking right now is um, translating what we all spend a lot of time writing resolutions about and talking about into bite sized pieces that um, the young people who live here can understand that. Yes, people are working on it and what we as citizens need to do, especially when I think about like, there's a big vote in Congress that's, you know, up, you know, it's not right now, but to allocate resources towards the app study. So, you know, that, that in the next year they should, you know, but it's that translation and I do not know how to do it, but young people do. Yeah, I, I'm not saying use TikTok because I don't think governments are supposed to use TikTok <laughs> anymore. But but something like that, these little short videos, and then they can do man on the street interviews. And it's the idea that things that we're already in support of, things that are already have broad support, things that are already happening in the city level, nothing controversial. Just things that we are doing. It also lets the young people know that like. You know, people are doing things because yeah. I think um, at least in my household, you know. No matter how much I say it, they're like, yeah, mom, nobody's doing anything. And I'm like, you know, they really are. So, no, I mean, that's definitely an idea that we thought about. Um, yeah, I mean, that is something we did think about, but it's kind of hard because we need someone to also overlook them. And something like that could easily go yeah. So, but well, I was going to say maybe they could do it and then somebody could watch it later on, yeah, but that set them free for a little bit. But yeah. I, I will say that they have a way of communicating that, you know, it would, it would be very powerful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely tell a conference. And, and again, you could be specific about the topics that already have. You know, the city support or, you know, I mean, yeah. things like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be controversial. I'll definitely let them know. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any? Oh, Eric. Uh, um, what, what is a uh, assembly member of uh, Lee's position on construction pricing and where it will increase the residents' uh, cost of living and will deter people and businesses from, from doing business in Manhattan? And would she consider rescinding it? What are you against it? Um, right now, she's listening to all the feedback oh, from the right. community. Um, I can't speak on it on that right now. Um, but this was still our office is still like looking into the and stuff, and we're definitely like taking feedback from the community. I, just, I want to add this this comment about the subway. Um, it's one fare for the entire city. The, we shouldn't have costs to travel within the city. I like to use that analogy where the travel within New York City is the same 275 or actually 290 now. The travel within New York City by, by car can also be the same. We shouldn't be um, charged to fee just to travel within these. Okay, I'll definitely let her know. I mean, again, you know, we welcome all feedback, you know, about it. And he is, she, you know, assembly member raises, basically is definitely like, Taking nobody's feedback. All right, um, board member to member, because we have a long agenda tonight, two minutes apiece. Justine, you're next. I'm sorry that I have to make that announcement when you went, and I apologize, but it applies to all of us. Yeah, no, I'll be quick. Thank you, Tammy. Um, and thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to follow up a little bit on Eric's question. Um, so I know that I've heard from folks in Chinatown, which is in and Little Italy, which are both in um, some member Grace. Mm -hmm. Lee's district, um, and they are very much against congestion pricing. Mm -hmm. They're very concerned about their businesses 
right. and very concerned about their uh, just as as everybody yeah. concerned about the transportation uh, in and out of the city, but also within the zone and what's going to happen and what's going to happen to the costs. Yeah. So odd hours. odd hours, exactly. And I've heard so many different variations in terms of um, exemption or whatever. And it's our elected officials, all of our elected officials need to step up and step in and, and stand for us, whether it's going to be carving out the exemption for the residents, making uh, no zone, no tolls at night, whatever it's going to be. But this is unconscionable what's happening. Yeah. So thank uh, you. Uh, if I could just jump in real quick, we've got a lot into the TMRB board. We've got a long way to go. Yeah, OK. They are not up to speed on how it works. Uh, they aren't up to speed on what exemptions will look like. They made it very clear that if one group is exempt, another one will bear the toll. Yes, and that's not OK. Yeah, <laughs> and they've got they've got quite a while to go to do their homework on that. And so we have plenty of time to hear from the community. The traffic mobility control board is the one who is making the decision. Yeah, yeah and they make the recommendation. And I, I, I encourage you all to look them up and yeah. but they wouldn't contact make, as needed. They wouldn't let us give public comment at their yeah. last Correct. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anybody else have any questions? Thank you. All right, let's move on next. We have Roy, thank you very much. And again, thanks for the great Say hi to everybody together. Congrats on the baby. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, congratulations. Um, next is Roy, Roy Ruiz. You are online. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much. My name is Roy Ruiz. I'm with Assembly Member Deborah Blick's office. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. And I'm sorry that uh, Deborah also couldn't be there in person. Uh, so I have just uh, two small um details tomorrow there will be an educational a listening tour webinar about the environmental bond act which new york was last november this is a program this is a program 4.2 billion projects uh across the state to mitigate the impacts of climate change protect natural resources preserve farmland expand access to open space and advance environmental justice, um, something that the assembly member is very passionate about. Um, the link to register to this webinar is on the board report that I'm going to share with the board, and you can also attend in person. There's course, one in August 9th, one in the Bronx, uh, August 22nd, uh, as well as other locations uh, upstate. Uh, you can go to NYS eba tour.com um, for more information and we also have a shred event coming up in september right right now we're looking at september 21st uh we have gotten the permit already it's going to be on the laguardia uh, i don't know if you know where the laguardia statue is right there on laguardia and and um bleaker just north of it uh, there's a little, little space on the side. Yeah. We're going to park a, a shred truck there with the Department of Sanitation, and we're going to conduct a shred event. And you can bring all the paper that you have stored in your closet, you know, for the whole year and just shred all of it, you know. Yeah. Um, so please join us for that in September. Yeah. Uh, all I have. <laughs> okay. Just getting back to the agenda. Thanks for the chance to bring the stuff there. Mm -hmm. right, guys. Anybody have any questions for Roy? Eric. Thank you. Um, yeah, Roy. Uh, same question about that. where um, Assembly Member Glick stands on congestion pricing and its impact to its residents and to our businesses. And would she consider uh, rescinding uh, congestion pricing from 2019? Oh, that's an interesting question. I will, will definitely bring it up to her. I know that she voted for that policy to to take place during the budget of 2019. Uh, so so she did vote for it initially. And then um, as the program rolled out, uh, she did advocate for more carve outs for for especially for the most vulnerable for people with disabilities, 
uh, for using transportation to get to different boroughs, to get to Manhattan from different boroughs. Um, it, we did advocate in favor of nonprofit organizations like God, God's Local Deliver, with, which depends entirely on uh, transportation to deliver meals all over the boroughs um, and would hurt them really badly. And also to advocate for, for residents of uh, the CBD, the central business district that is going to be impacted by, uh, by congestion pricing um, so that there can be carve outs for them. I'm paying close attention to the hearings that the Traffic Mobility Board is having. They just had one last week. Uh, they will be having another one uh, soon. I don't have the date for that. Uh, they will be taking questions from the public. I mean, we're, we're following it very closely, but she has in fact advocated uh, not just uh, once but a numbers times other with other community leaders about having more carve outs for the people impacted by this um and and to your point she also has uh mentioned that in in, in some of her testimony the, the economic impact that it will have on businesses or pass along charges that that will happen because of this so um does that answer your question a little bit? Um, thank you, Roy. Yeah, I, I hope she changes her mind. She changes her mind and, and keeps in consideration that that tolls always increase and exemptions can be removed. So it, it's it'll be a, a, basically a mobility tax. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Vicky, you are next. Can I make a comment on this congestion? No, it's only for Roy. If you have a question for Roy, because that's what this is about then that's where we're going. It's only about questions and conversations with our elected rep. No. Okay. If for a discussion about congestion pricing, we're going to have it at transportation. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Roy? Seeing none in the room, Roy, thank you so very much for joining mm -hmm. us. Bye-bye. To Andrew Chang, who's actually in the room. Yes. And you're very sneaky. He's online. I see him online, and then the next second, I'm like, he's gone. I know the uh, exhibitors room. So, thank, thank you very much again for hosting Community Board One and for our president's office, both last night for environmental protection. Tonight, we appreciate the space. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, it's, uh, it's a great location. You know? <laughs> um, I guess three things I want to talk about. I'm Andrew Chan. I'm here on behalf of Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. Three things I want to talk about is one, um, Indoor air quality legislation. The, the Manhattan Borough President introduced legislation in partnership with various New York City Council members, including Majority Leader Keith Powers. The legislation on indoor air quality, which relates to schools, government buildings, commercial buildings, and residential buildings. These bills call for the posting of information and data on the air exchange per hour, carbon dioxide. Metrics, carbon monoxide metrics, PM uh, 2.5, PM 10, temperature, and other key metrics. The bills are intro 1130, 1129, 1128, and 1127. We saw that during the pandemic, indoor air quality is a key factor for reducing the risk of spreading disease and illness, especially uh, with recent smoke conditions due to wildfires in Canada. So it's you know, very important that we have um, the data to ensure us clean air as possible indoors. Uh, secondly, we wrote a letter to Commissioner Kreisman of the New York City Mayor's Office, uh, the, the Community Affairs Unit, regarding uh, mitigating noise pollution during the summer. I sent this letter out to Tammy and uh, Lucy earlier this month. This letter, uh, these recommendations from our office include funding community building campaigns to inform New Yorkers about the dangers of fireworks and the health impacts of noise, supporting legislation to establish noise camera program, programs that would protect motor vehicles exceeding noise limits, deploying traffic calming measures to prevent illegal racing, banning all non-essential helicopter flights, and enacting reforms to reduce congestion caused by e-commerce, increasing the frequency of inspections at construction sites, and expanding camera enforcement technology across the city. Once again, these are recommendations from our office. We sent this out to uh, the mayor's office to uh, help ensure, uh, I guess, as quiet as uh, uh, residential neighborhoods as, as we can experience this summer. And then and lastly, um, 
And this will answer your question, Eric. Um, the behind pro president is generally, generally supportive of the idea of congestion pricing, which would help reduce congestion and raise money for public transit while also helping them to reduce carbon emissions. Um, Manhattan, has some, Manhattan has some of the worst congestion in the country, but only 20% of residents own a car. But obviously, you know, he doesn't want it to negatively impact local New Yorkers. So it's very important that there's, you know, variable tolling. Uh, the Traffic Mobility Review Board, you know, listen to the public comments and make the appropriate exemptions. Obviously, we're not there yet, as Kevin mentioned, but, you know, hopefully, overall, we won't unduly burden New Yorkers. Yeah. And that's all I have to say regarding uh, congestion pricing. Well, thank you for obviously catching before we, <laughs> before Eric got there. Hands up for any questions for the borough president, Vicki. Well, I wanted to just sort of run this story by you. Um, I, I, I was in a cab with an Indian um, economist driving a cab, and I was complaining about congestion. This was some years back, and he told me, he said, you know what? The whole plan is just falling into place. We're going to get rid of the yellow cab industry. We're going to bring in Uber. We're going to bring in 100,000 cars into the city to increase everything you just said, congestion, noise, uh, uh, smells. And then we're going to introduce this new tax, <laughs> congestion pricing. So you know what? This guy told me this. Seven years ago, eight years ago, it worked like a charm. And he was an economist. So if he knows that, lots of people know it. So why are we going to this inevitable end? I know. We're, we're allowing it. it. We don't have the details here regarding. But why did we allow? Up to a hundred thousand Uber cars. Vicky, I I don't think any of us are going to argue about. Um, but no, but I'm tired of like all this, you know, a conversation over and over and over with little, you know, actual insight. So at transportation, we can certainly do a resolution about <laughs> limiting and discussing about the quantities and the caps on for hire vehicles, but. I think that's where we got to go. Now I want the politician to hear how upset I am. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Anybody else have any questions for Andrew? Seeing none and seeing no hands up. Thank you, Andrew, very much for sliding in and out. And Connor, you are next from Council Member Mark Bay's office. Hi uh, again. Um, <laughs> thank you for having me. I just have a few local updates. Uh, the first one is about um, Northwest Battery Park. Coastal resiliency. I think you heard this at the Environmental Protection Committee, but um, they're extending their deadline for comments uh, on the designs that were presented uh, this summer. Um, they're extending it into earlier, uh, early September. Uh, there's an online feedback tool. Um, if you, you can reach out to our office to learn how to give feedback, I'm sure you, uh, the community board has that resource as well. Um, in terms of opening Park Row, uh, the Department of Transportation is hosting three outreach sessions this week um, to gather community feedback. Um, and it can be about anything uh, from like which open to to pedestrian walkways, um, landscaping, tree planting, anything that you want to see uh, related to that project. Um, it's at Kimlau Square on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, July 26th and 7th to, uh, from 1 to 7 p.m. Uh, or Friday, uh, July 28th at the Brooklyn Bridge Arches from 1 to 4. Um, again, you can follow up with our office about that information. Um, in terms of SCREE and DRE, uh, recently our office worked to um, basically enact an authorization from the state, thanks to our state partners, to expand SCREE and DRE to residents of Battery Park City and residents of former Mitchell Lama buildings who previously were ineligible. Um, so we've been, we finally got that passed through the council and it's been, um, it's sort of been uh, enacted in this way so we can start, uh, they can start receiving applications. So we've, our office has been a resource and will continue to be a resource for folks 
who want to learn more about if they're eligible or have trouble with the application process. It can get quite complicated. Um, there's a retroactive clause for former Mitchell Lama buildings. Um, so if you want to learn more information, if you think you might apply, uh, be eligible, please reach out to our office and we can just help guide you through that process. Um, and in terms of you know the budget, uh, the local budget, city budget, um, just a few highlights for CB1. Um, one is uh, we were able to uh, fund Nolan Park Cultural Campus on Governor's Island, uh, as well as capital uh, budget requests from Manhattan Youth for their uh, HVAC system. So we're excited about those two um, capital investments. Um, again, back to Battery Park City, we, um, we've been receiving a lot of uh, calls and complaints about Massive rent hikes in Battery Park City, uh, especially for market rate. <laughs> yeah, shockingly. So I know. Yeah. So, Not surprised. So, um, we, you know, it's different for market rate units, obviously, right? There's fewer protections, there's fewer things that we can easily enforce, but there's that doesn't mean you're powerless, uh, especially when tenants can come together to organize and our office is fully supportive of that kind of um, organizing. I think we've been, you know, working with people one on one, but also just looking at how we can do better outreach efforts. Um, to have, keep people informed of their rights, make sure we do all our homework for any regulatory agreement or ground lease uh, agreement that might be being um, sort of dodged or misinterpreted at some point. So there, it gets very complicated, but we want to be a resource for folks. So we just encourage people to reach out. Um, and I know that this is a, this is a district wide issue, a CD wide issue. So uh, we're always there to help folks with that kind of issue. Um, we. Um, did a site visit of 111 Washington Street recently, which has been a development project that has caused a lot of um, negative air quality and health impacts and structural impacts to the surrounding community. Um, and so we've been trying to follow up on that very closely. We did a site visit with state agent, uh, agencies, city agencies, and residents um, to basically express those concerns directly to the oversight agencies affiliated with that project. Um, we are currently following up on items related to that, but I just want to reiterate our support for the residents in that neighborhood and make sure that we can try to hold this developer accountable because um, it seems like uh, there, uh, there isn't as much oversight as we want for the project. Uh, for 57 Ann Street, the facade, the facade collapse, or the garage collapse building, um, just as a quick update that you know, we've been following up constantly with the department buildings to try to get those vacant orders lifted as quickly as safely as possible for residents to return to their um, homes. And so we're just continuing to do that. And we again encourage people to reach out about that. Uh, and finally, just reiterating our uh, support for the advocacy around 60 Wall Street. Um, and just to clarify, we um, are in opposition to the modifications to the special permit, which means that we are in support. Of uh, the drafted resolution by the community board, which is a no with conditions. Thank you. Uh, questions for Connor? Justine. Just a quick question. Hey, Connor, how you doing? Um, going to Department of Buildings and um, their uh, shedding and scaffolding mm -hmm. requirements, especially as relates to Battery Park City, have you been able to make any headway? Yes. And we're going to talk about it in our resolution today. Yes. Right? yes. So, one thing I uh, left out was um, some work around scaffolding requirements that seem to be coming out of nowhere for a few buildings in Battery Park City. And for those who aren't aware, um, they're sort of expanding into um, like public spaces, like uh, playgrounds and parks in, in, the, in that community um, for the first time in the, those buildings facade inspection history. So we've been trying to get to the bottom of what changed. Um, I've had a bit of back and forth with the apartment buildings. I requested that they come to the community board. They are very dodgy about that. Um, I think that we've just sort of been trying to get clarity. I think since some of it hasn't actually manifested yet, it's just sort of, um, it's been tougher to get the kind of enforcement that they normally do. Um, but we got a little bit of clarity around uh, some of the restricted access. I think they said it focuses mostly on the playground area of West King Park, but um, that's something that like I'm continuing to follow up with um, until we get like a clear answer. So. And if I may, let's take that offline. It's okay. A specific topic. Mm -hmm. We'll take that offline. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Connor? Seeing no questions in the room, seeing no hands online. Thank you very much, Connor. All righty, let's move on. We have our treasurer's report from Mariama. Cool. 
Um, so we had a pretty uneventful uh, fiscal year end closing upon June 30th, which is a, a good thing for your fiscal year end close to be uneventful. Um, eventful is of course problematic. You should have all received a copy of the budget via email. Uh, if you have not, of course, it's available from the office. Next month, I will ask that uh, it's part of the packet. Although, you know, considering that we're short staff, well, there it is. Yeah. A line from Lucy did a tremendous job putting the packet together. So, you know, um, in, in the future, we can see if you can have it in front of you. And to that end, with regard to Lucian having left um, just before the fiscal year, and there was a Unfortunate, I'm going to use the term loss loop very loosely um, because money comes in different buckets, right? And some has to be expended by the end of the year. We don't get to roll it over. And so there was an instance where there was $14,000 that we did not get to use because Lucian would have had to be a part of the process, facilitated the, or, um, the approval of anything that was ordered, and then, you know, like a sign off before he left. There wasn't time for us to place an order receive it and have him sign off before the time that he exited um, the office. So that $14,000 was lost. Again, I'm using it loosely because it could not be rolled over into the next budget. But other than that, uh, we're good. And that's it. Any questions? Yes. Uh, we'll go Pat. Where does the $14,000 come from? It's a, a city allocation that has to be expended by the end. So since we didn't use it this year, we it, will get it again. It does not roll over in the new bucket. It will we? So it we goes back to the city. It goes back to the city. But we have a bill. Get it. They will no. We need fourteen thousand. We won't get that fourteen thousand back, but we get a new bucket that's what of new money to use by the end of the fiscal year. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. And will it include fourteen thousand? Oh, no, 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 to use it or lose it. No, I understand that. Yeah. What I'm saying is because what? Because yeah. we did not use the fourteen thousand dollars, will our next budget reflect that we need fourteen thousand dollars less than we needed this year? No. No. Okay. That's what I want. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. No, I just, I just said I'm using lost loosely because we didn't really lose anything. We just could have spent another fourteen thousand dollars had we had the you know full opportunity. You mean like for dinner? <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, is there another hand? You good? <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Uh, yeah. uh, but I, I'm concerned that that didn't get translated properly. At the at the end of the day, what? So I don't know what our you know, budget is. It's, it, let's what, just put it this way. Was it a hundred? Let's say it's a hundred thousand. Next year, do we have a hundred thousand? Minus fourteen thousand. No, okay. Thank you. I just thank you. Thank you. No, that's what I'm saying. It's a brand that's new bucket right. of brand new money. Okay. And we get to use it or not or lose it again. You know, no. next year. So <laughs> give thing. us the same budget though next year. Is what you're saying? Correct. I mean, yes, is the understanding as of now. But this is a city. We're talking about bu budget. If they have to make a cut, then we're going to get a cut. I mean, okay. you know. But they won't. And then I'm going to be forced to be out. They won't think that right. That we don't need that one here. Right. We didn't ever put anything. No, correct. Because well, because if it passed, don't think we could spend the fourth. Yes. And we will ensure before June thirtieth. Of oh, next year, yeah. that whatever we need to spend, we already spent, yeah. and we'll be discussing that in March. So yeah. we're not waiting till June yeah. and having correct to about that. Correct. Yeah. So at the end of Q1, when Mariana gives her report, you'll be hearing of opportunities and how we're going to use the money yeah. in Q2. So, so if we're money. under budget, they take the money back. So we don't get like a tap on the head of the boy dummies. They say, oh, yay. All right. Any other questions for Mariana? Hearing, seeing none, let's hit it. Chair Thank report. You. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go. Oh, whoa. What the hell? Uh, what, was there something before that? Or did National Night Out come later? Did I see a couple slides before mine? Yeah, no. Nope. All right. So, okay. It's been busy. July updates. 
um, out and about in lower Manhattan. So thank you very much. Um, personnel committee, I only put there, I think, once, but I want to say thank you to the personnel committee as we're trying to look for a district manager. Again, I implore people on the board, if you see somebody great in the city services and our elected reps, we have a great, great office in CB1, and we would really love to find a great PM. Um, it's been a busy month with a lot of really interesting and different things happening. Pier 76 task force has started. Um, Andrew Zelter and Alice are going to be on that. Um, Alice and I will rotate in and out as to who goes to those meetings. Um, Pier 40, they're not discussing at the morning moment, but they are discussing Pier 76. And included on that task force is community boards 1, 2, and 4. So that's kind of interesting um, to see the current condition, how much money they need, and the potential uses and funding. It's diverse. Um, Five World Trade Center, uh, we had a meeting with the coalition and Senator Kavanaugh. There's not very much that we can say at this point. We are grateful that uh, the senator and all of our electeds intervened so the Public Authority Control Board did not vote on the crappy deal that's out there now. Um, and we have hope to increase affordability. Um, I got to attend district service cabinet. So it was really awesome. I have to give a shout out to the district managers at all the other CBs who have been so patient and kind with me as we sat and did some borough consultations, taking my chair hat off and putting on a district manager hat. <laughs> and thank you to Ones who ran in and out and helped and Lucy who ran in and out and helped while I was on a four hour call. So that was pretty awesome. And we have borough board this week. We had 250 Water Street Working Group has kicked back up. The City Hall did an asylum seeker update. Um, I will not comment on that meeting. It was uh, an interesting video. You could participate via YouTube as much as you could have participated if you were at the meeting. Huh. So there we go. Um, I'll leave that where it is. But for those of you who came to Bob Schneck's memorial on Saturday, it was lovely. Yeah. It was lovely to see all of you. Cora did a beautiful job and the family. It's um, there's light to see that Bob's poetry lives in his family, yeah. which was beautiful. And yes, what an incredibly diverse and complicated man. Yes. Um, and he will be missed by almost every committee on this board because he has been to every committee that was on our board. Um, yesterday, I went to Mayor Adams press conference up in CB4 about scaffolding um, and he calls it GSD for get scaffolding down. Um, there is really interesting legislation that he's putting forward, attacking it from a multi-pronged situation, trying to set up uh, really good systems looking ahead to do both carrot and stick. Um, and to, although I truly believe that if he did a press conference in front of every building that had scaffolding up longer than three years, um, then we wouldn't have any more scaffolding up because they took it down two days before his press conference. <laughs> right now. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, but that was really interesting. So it's carrot and stick, which will be really interesting to see how they work. Um, the gist is that if you apply and you have scaffolding that goes up, you must show work product that you have hired somebody to repair the work within 90 days. If you don't, then you start getting fined. Yeah. Now, they are looking also working with the borough president on um, financing options for not for profits for churches and religious institutions that may have buildings that are in deep need of repair but don't have funding. So they're looking to set up some kind of situation to help them through that as well. And then probably one of the most fascinating and interesting things is the hope that they are working with the civil engineers to develop three to four different types of scaffolding. So they could be lightweight, secured, and design friendly and inexpensive, that it doesn't have to be um, gross poles and just all solid green. And lastly, his goal was if netting is appropriate, put netting, not scaffolding. Why block the light? We really need to have our public be able to see the stores, see the buildings, and provide safety because he was very, very, very large on saying um, criminal activity happens in the dark. Mm. And the scaffolding provides opportunities for them. So that's hopeful. Um, and then today, as I mentioned earlier, thanks to the assembly member and the center, uh, we met Lily Pham from the SLA. So, and thank you to Susan, who I think is going up tomorrow. Next slide. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't notice, that was 
one center street at Lego Play. <laughs> the last picture. All right. Um, really important. We all go off for August, but this week, July 26th and 7th from 1 to 7 and July 28th from 1 to 4. It's about Camp Lau Square and Park Row. It is really critical. We have had Park Row. If you look at the neck, right, that was part of the borough based jails, they made a priority reopening Park Row, reimagining Park Row. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been, it was in that document, the ones that we supported, it had turned about opening it with cars. There have been proposals made without cars, with cars, with more bikes, with less bikes. The entire area really needs a holistic vision to take a look at. Um, many of us have been advocating since September. 12th to reopen Park Row and allow for vehicular traffic and direct access in two directions by not only just somebody after you get through a gate, but by general public. Yeah. So this is the opportunity for everybody to really start talking about it again and going back and having conversations. No one's saying that there's any one solution, but everybody needs to be heard. Everybody from both ends of Park Row, right? Mm -hmm. We are on one side, we go halfway up Park Row, and then CD3 is the other side. We have beautiful park that has just opened by Rose Street. That's amazing. Rosa. Um, and we really need to support that. We need to take a look, though, at everything, right? How many closed streets are there? Where are the bicycle accidents? Where are additional places that bike paths could go? Instead of, you know, necessarily, we need to speak out about this one and beautification at Kimlo and really take a bigger look to make sure that we can get people in and out of both the seaport and Chinatown safely, whether they're on a bus, on a bicycle, on their own two feet, or in a car. Okay. And this is your opportunity to go and just yeah. Where's like, where Kim Lau Square? I'm just one of the much familiar with that name. So where is that? Chinatown. I know, but <laughs> the end of Park Row. Okay, I just I'm familiar with the other side. Just pass Worth. Pass Worth. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The sex Bowery. Worth and Bowery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. My favorite. So these are workshops. They're public workshops. It is not six hours of your time. You do not need to sit there for six hours. You can show up at one and be done. You can show up at two, at three, at four. Or at five, but I would not show up at six forty-five and expect mm -hmm. to be able to get a full workshop experience. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. not a tour; it's just a workshop in because this is on the one of them is on Rose Street. So I'm just curious. Yes, how that... I think they're walking. I they think are walking. walking and talking. So mm -hmm. right, sure you meet up. walking and talking. That's my idea. Walking and talking. Alrighty, um, so. The newsletter, everyone needs to say a huge thank you, please, to our secretary, Mimi, who has taken over for our news. Thank you, Mimi. So <laughs> if you need, if, if there is something that you want published, you need to send it to Lucy and I. And if it's not something that's, if it's something that's public benefit, community benefit, something like Night out, um, national. national night out, things like that. We can certainly circulate. If it's for a particular business, please. I'm so sorry, we cannot. We cannot show, you know, potentially that way. But if you're out and you're taking pictures and you're walking around, you think, "Wow, this is a really cool building. This is a really cool thing." Please send them in, and we can use them. Much like the view from One Center Street, which you see here. <laughs> All right. Uh, next slide. Restroom. <laughs> I almost did. I almost. Francis sent us a porta potty picture from here 15 years Upscale porta potty. So. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we have a busy hall. We have lots of stuff happening. If you didn't tune in to Alice's meeting, that's okay. Please listen to it. There's so much She'll report, but there's so much happening. I encourage you in the month of August, take the time, look at the resiliency stuff. We're talking about the redevelopment of every aspect of our waterfront. Every aspect. It's really important. We have a ULIP coming up for uh, City of Yes for Economic Opportunity. We have the first person community council. 
We have adjusted all the fall schedules for the holidays. Please take a look at September, October, November, December. Your meeting may not be on the day you think it is. That doesn't mean you get excused because you didn't look at the calendar. It just means please take a look at it it's now. It's posted. It's posted. Thank you. Yes. All right. We will be upstairs on 22 as a regular course of action, unless there is a huge meeting or a, like 25 presenters, then we will ask to be in this room for convenience. All right, including full board. Uh, full board will always be here. Uh, we have had some offers to go some other places, but let's be honest. This is going to be easiest for the team in the office, and I need to do what's best for Lucy and Oneg, so they're not overburdened. We have a fantastic intern team who's here in the summer with us, which is great, and we have a college student working tech for the meetings, which is great. They all go back to school, mm -hmm. so we need to do what's best for the office. All right. Um, with that, I close my chair report. Does anybody have any questions? Fantastic. Let's get rolling. Health Towers is our first resolution. Oh, national. Thank you. Sorry, this is first precinct national night out, August first. I expect everybody to go who's in town. I believe gone. Pat and Lucy are going, and Pat's going to speak for community board board. All righty. Next slide. I'm sorry to that honesty. Go. Yep. There we go. All right, tunnel to towers resolution. And does anybody have an extra packet of verses hanging out? Oh, fair. Okay. Uh, tunnel to towers came. They gave a great presentation. Uh, we did a full resolution because it's been two years since we've done that. In 2020, we had done a full reso for them. In 21, they weren't sure and they, um, um, and they came very last minute 22 they we did it as a report because there were no changes so this year we gave them all the feedback um it was great and this is the rest of does anybody have any questions no oh, question i second. second it okay we go by affirmation here we go all right assuming everybody is a yes do i have any notes hearing and seeing none do i have any abstentions Hearing and seeing any, do I have any recusals? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, we had citywide event coordination, management, and SAPO come to really educate us on all the opportunities that they have. Um, it was amazing. The portals, the this, the that. We have a lot of things coming up that we need to figure out how and where we will find. When they come, they will be presented in Betty's committee. So, if it's a street fair and it has your street on it, please make sure you say something and come to transportation. That is the place where they will be. All right. And I am not going to go over the whole thing because it was a really complex and 62 slides. So, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the YouTube, or if you want, we can share the slides with you. It was pretty comprehensive. Any questions? That's all. We do have slides. Thank you, Lauren. These are the type of SAPO events. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the notification that is out there. <clears throat> you can see some of them work very well with our normal course of business. The 30 days is a little dicey, but it's really tiny. It's not really designed for much. Next slide. All right. The street events is the one that's the hardest, and we're going to try and work with them on it. Um, everything else is pretty much as usual. We don't comment on press conferences, rallies, and demos usually. Um, production events, you know, that's uh, that's the mayor's office. Um, movies and entertainment. Next slide. What was the? What What's this, this distinction between the street festivals and street events? I, I can't see that far. Okay, street festivals are nonprofits that sponsor festivals with vendors that require closing one block or more, and you have to apply by December 31st of the year before. Okay. So, people who applied for 2023 had to have done it by the end of 2022. A street event that is held on a public street, what? curb, or after the work. Thank you. Um, that 
block something like the sidewalk or the street. Okay. And that's could be kind of the specific um, examples of that, but I can go back in and let you know. Yeah. All right. Anything? Any other questions? All right. With none, this is my last slide on this stuff, but I'm promising you for 63 slides. Take a look at, the, at them. It was pretty cool. Um, cultural events is the next big thing to come up, which will be an interesting one. Okay. All right. Um, capital and budget. Take a look through your committees. Take a look around the neighborhood. If it's something that is off that we want to put back on, do so. I'm not a huge fan of taking stuff off because you never know what's going to capture the imagination of the budget office on any given year. Mm -hmm. So bring it back, put it in. We always have the stuff at the top. Next slide. Yep. On that, this is so that VR is effective as possible related to the budget. Is it possible to have each um, agency come and discuss with us the reasons why certain things just never move forward so that we can better? There are reasons listed in the air table. So everything that we get, they they comment. They do comment. Super vague or non informative in any way. So I'm wondering if it would be helpful if we had an actual human being who would be prepared and able to discuss it with each committee. <laughs> I'd love to say that we're going to get somebody who would do that. I can make a request for September. I think it's highly doubtful, but um, send me the ones that you think highlighted me definitely more, and we can work on that for the summer for August. Awesome. Yep. And I, I, it would highlight the ones you definitely want more detail on first, because it's going to be easier to make those asked than to get a human being. Correct. Because we may be community board one and the best one, of course, but we're one of 12 in Manhattan alone. So there's lots of places for them to go. Another question is at Waterfront Park. We're talking about whether or not there was a limit to how many um, we were able to put in because we were remembering that. Is there a it has changed over the years. We used to have where we put our budget priorities yeah. and we, you know, we list everything and then put the most important ones to us. Um, I will double check and get back to you. Any other questions? Okay. Vicky Cameron, you're up first. So our committee, Ella, Landmarks and Preservation, we heard four uh, presentations for projects. I've uh, sent out all the descriptions. They're not very long. It was basically one page each. Um, slides. I have slides to go along with each one. We could theoretically take all this together if you guys follow the logic of each uh, resolution. Um, so we'll start with 36 Hudson Street. Slides are up. Yeah. And um, so this is an extension to a rooftop, an extension in the sense that the uh, middle slide, uh, where you see the top of the uh, black enclosure at the top, that is the existing penthouse. And on the right, you see that uh, they're proposing to encompass that garden space that is uh, empty. Uh, there, it's an installation of a new clear material rooftop, rooftop safety railing that you can see uh, also in the third slide, uh, on the right slide, excuse me. Um, it seems uh, that most of it uh, complies to landmark LPC rules where if you can't see it from the street, uh, then, you know, you complied. Uh, one thing that we discussed, uh, the committee felt strongly about is that the glass, the slanted glass on the new proposal, as you see in the right hand top, uh, the roof is flat, but then that slanted glass, which is right behind the, uh, existing parapet, which is arched, uh, it was proposed to be mirrored glass. 
even though it's minimally seen, there was a lot of discussion and our preference was not to have mirror glass. But so we put in our resolution and the architect was willing to review it with the client. So our, pardon? Do you need next slide? Remember you have to advance the slides. I have to advance them. You have to say next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, didn't know. Okay, next slide. Well, I've just described it. So, as you can see, on, oh, and then there is a uh, stop here for a minute. On the left side, you see that there is a, an exterior green space. These people want to enlarge their penthouse, and you see that is now eaten up uh, where the cross hatching is. That's one owner, and as you can see, the lower owner has already done that. Next slide. Uh, there is, this is why you have slides, they remind you of things. There is a lot line window. So if you see on the left, that's an existing condition. On the right, you can see uh, there's a, a third window added to that elevation. Uh, it has a sprinkler um, pointing right into it so that it's not a fire hazard. Fire won't uh, travel from one property to another. So they've complied with that. Next. And these are the views from the, the street uh, looking up and you can see uh, on the right hand side, there is that yeah, a rendering of the reflecting walls. But like I said, we um, requested that uh, an alternative material be used and uh, didn't seem to get any opposition. Yes, but then a quick question. So you don't like the reflective glass because birds could fly into it. No, this this is not. There's only eight inches of it here. No, I think the committee felt that people from above, like my oh. point was that we know the reflective glass, Reflects. you know, mm -hmm. can, can like burn cars uh, in thinking. London. But the point is that's a very, very large building. That wasn't discussed. This is minimal. It's right behind the parapet. But as you can see, if you're sort of looking at it, yeah. maybe other people from other floors could see it from surrounding buildings. And like I said, the architect did not have an issue to recommend uh, reflective glass is more expensive. So I think the owner might be pleased. Okay, thank you. So that's that one. Next. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, the installation of non-standard pedestrian ramps with granite paver crosswalks within the historic district. If you read this resolution, but basically through the discussion with the uh, design department people, we were told that the city was sued uh, by an ADA advocacy group and certain adjustments to the ramps and the crosswalks have to be made throughout the city. All of these adjustments, as described uh, in this slide, I don't think I have a lot of slides here. Um, it, you, will, you can see that all of them have to comply with DOT standard. So again, the design department came to us to show us the compilation of this project and this proposal is that they are adhering to the DOT standards and the location uh, of the whatever number of ramps that are going to be, uh, well, crossings and ramps in within CB1's domain were provided to them by the DOT. There was a lot of discussion by the committee because people were upset that there wasn't sort of a discussion on these locations and, you know, the condition of the streets and all that stuff, but that is not in the purview of this presentation or the agency they came to present. Do we have another slide on this? Yes, so we did eventually discuss. I asked something about the quality of the granite and the depth and, you know, what is this going to look like so that it has longevity with traffic and tripping and uh, everything meets DOT. So, again, that's all we can ask. Next slide. And this is what it will sort of look like uh, with these. Um, alternating uh, sizes of bluestone, which is used, it's, it's a nice thing to use to create a, a, a variety of, uh, and a, a variety of design and, and direction and also create some um, 
uh, direction. So you get larger strips and smaller strips. They are all non slip. And um, I think do we have another slide on this topic. Yeah, yes, yeah. so that's what they're they're looking again. Everything is standard DOT. There is no point in debating anything right. other than you comply. Okay. Um, next. This is Howard Hughes, right? The creek thing. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not going. This is, okay. I can't see. I that says Fulton Corridor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. So, any questions on, on, on this uh, resolution? I have on the street. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, does it impact any of the streets that we previously tried to get um, non standard? Um, yes. Put in because of, for the same reason, no. but we were told that there was that the um, uh, what the little block the cobblestone, the cobblestone was we couldn't we could not change that yeah. under any circumstances. Are any of those cobblestone streets no, to be no. only the ones that are, are listed here? And only because we said it within the historic district. I wanted to, yeah, see. yeah. Well, okay. So we don't know, like, based on the fact that the city lost this lawsuit and they have to comply. They might come back with another batch of streets. I, I yeah. that wasn't made clear. Uh, and again, everything that is going to be changed is exactly on that list. And we, like I said, we did bring it up several times. It's just that if you know, if you want that, uh, if you want to take this issue up, it has to be with politicians who then direct the DOT, but not with this agency. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no comprehensive plan. Uh, we're not happy with that. But again. Uh, we were asked to opine and decide or, on a resolution on, on on this scope of work, and that's mm -hmm. what we focused on. Hi, yes. Um, so, uh, just the the because there was a lot of debate in the room that night. Um, in my issue with it, and you know, I think at the end of it, we you know, determined that it sort of the issues that I brought, brought up are not necessarily the scope of what we're being asked. But you know, some of it was the lack of a um, clear plan, like the reference. Different intersections of cobblestones that are in you know, great state of disrepair. You know, part of the you know, thing that we discussed that at length was the decision on some of these intersections don't make an incredible amount of sense. Some of them are very low traffic, some of them are off the beaten path, two of them are effectively alleyways, you know, glorified alleyways. And then you have multiple intersections in the same district that are not even being touched, even though they're, they're very you know, uh, coming with traffic. Yes, I think from the aesthetic standpoint that we talked about that night as well was about um, mm -hmm. you know, just from a purely aesthetic standpoint mm -hmm. in that area in five, in five block radius, you have five different types of materials. Mm -hmm. We asked the question whether or not this was, yeah, you know, going to be the standard going forward, and it was not a comprehensive sort of answer to that. So, I understand we're being asked a very narrow question, but it was unsettling to me to be to not have a complete picture of. Any well, story? welcome to politics, I guess. Yeah, what well, else to say? <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, Betty, oh, Betty, hand Betty up. please. Sorry. Yes. See, my sure. concern is a different than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is to some mention that the lawsuit was filed by the United States. At that time, it was the East Coast Paralyzed Veterans Association. Uh -huh. I'm a member. I was a member even back then because I was a therapist that worked with that population. So this is a long history and a long tour. And it was filed specifically about our district, and the problems in our district. So when it went to federal court, we were the example of what was there. But while the US access one has not come out yet with the right of way recommendation, and that's exactly what the DOT would have to rely on when they come out, if they're not out yet. But I would still ask there shouldn't be more than a quarter of an inch variation between the uh, area between the stones as well as the building blocks themselves, which traditionally have more than a quarter of an inch variation along any one surface, unless they're specifically they work to make sure that they're leveled off. Well, I think if it's half an inch, you have to put a slant and, and, and make it a quarter inch, right? So quarter inch is the maximum. On in ADA standards. Again, it's being recommended in some oh. the fact that this doesn't even reflect that mm -hmm. to say that it should say there is no more than a quarter of an inch variation on the surface. 
important. All right, we have another hand up. Just one second. I want to just uh, address this. I, I understand that he, we can put that in if you want, but um, again, in order for this to be effective, right, it, it needs to go back to DOT. DOT needs to stay page change these standards, right? Uh, and again, we should go back to our politicians who then listen to the, uh, the, the DOT agencies, listen to that, right? Uh, uh, us telling the design department. Well, that's will, true, but, but they didn't say, because nobody asked them what, what the variation was. They said it, it complies with DOT standards. But nobody asked them specific. I watched the case. Oh. Oh. No, we didn't. Okay, no. let's not argue. Yeah. Let's not argue back and forth. No, no, we're not arguing. Okay, good. So we can have a Susan, can I have a hand up yeah. behind you, Bruce? Oh. And then Susan. Bruce. <laughs> Walking just in time. Yeah. I have to say, coincidentally, I, I have to say that uh, I did not vote one way or another because there was a little contretemps in the middle of this discussion. Uh, however, I, I cannot vote for this resolution. Uh, I, I don't think the issue is confined to our politicians. I think that's more actually more uh, uh, diffuse than this. The presenter, who I appreciate, didn't even know the streets that he was discussing with us. Uh, repeatedly, he said, Hollister Street for Hollister, light or late. I finally asked him, has he ever walked these streets that he is asking us to opine on? And he said, frankly, no, I, I don't know that. So we pointed out that Hollister is an alley, Staple is an alley, the, the last streets that should be done. We said, I said, and there was some affirmation that this does need to be a holistic matter where they're putting these curb cuts Echoing what Benny said, those streets are impassable by foot, by bike, or by car. That's the part of, for instance, Greenwich Street that goes from Canal to about Hubert. It's impassable. They spent a year and a half redoing one intersection, and that's it. And it's the second time they did it. And they've told this community board that they don't have the time, the money, or the skill to actually lay the cobblestones correctly. The same is true of Jay and Harrison. So it doesn't matter to me that the DDC is just a little implementing body. They want an opinion from us as to what they're doing. Just like, again, I bring it up, Worth Street took seven years. Now yeah. DDC has decided uh, to redo the whole intersection because they wanted a separate contract and they wanted more work even though it was integrated into right. the first one. Okay, can we, first, right. So that's, that's, that's my position. This should be a holistic uh, resolution. And it is reflective in the language that I put in there, okay? And as we discussed, and I know this for a fact, they don't have to go to the site, okay? The people that came to us get a list and their job is to comply with DOT standards. And that's what they came to show us. We commented on that. I'll be right with you. We commented on that and anything else has to go to some other channel. If we don't like the streets, if we don't like the lack of homogeneity, we put this in here, but our job was to respond to what was presented. And then we can have our borough president come over and we can ask him or Chris Marte. Anyway, yeah, uh, Ms. Susan, me. Susan had her hand up and then. But no, I just was going to say, I, I think if Betty wants to expand it and for us to put it in, um, we can put, we can change the language a bit for the quarter inch. It's not going to. Uh, Absolutely not. I'll take a look at it. And again, like, that's all. you know, saying this, that, or the other, they're standards. We can then go and change the standards. No, 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 we're not saying that. I just think we can do it. It's not a big deal. No, absolutely agree with you. Okay. Vera? Oh, Gerald. I just want to say that I'm appreciative of DOT even wanting our opinion. <laughs> exactly. Um, <and laughs> if that's all you have to say, then I'm good. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for saying what all of us think. Now, I understand, but what happens if we decide to oppose this? Are they going to move forward anyway? Of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, but we are using this, which is why I think we should, uh, you know, vote on it because we want to use this opportunity to say, yes, 
we're grateful for this, but we would like to have a holistic approach and we would like to have more work and more input. Otherwise, it just goes in the place. I also respectfully may I call this to question. Second. Yes. Are we going to take this one by itself? Yes. Yeah. So okay. we're going to call this by affirmation. So assuming it, if you are online, please turn your camera on to vote. That's Tricia and Laura. Um, if your cameras are not on, you don't qualify to vote. There we go. That's one. Um, okay. Um, so we're going to assume everybody is a yes, unless I hear otherwise. And that would be, do I hear any no's? I'm a no. Sure, no. This is a no, share no. No. You know. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, hearing no more no's, are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Now, before we proceed to the next one, should we take a vote on 36 Hudson Street? Uh, we need to go through all of your slides. No? Yes. No. Yeah, I already did. That was the first presentation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll call the question. I'll call the question. Thank, Thank you. So okay. So yeah. fantastic. Again, uh, cameras on. Perfect. Laura. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't talk about this. Okay. We didn't talk about it. So not only do not finish it. Okay. Assuming everybody is yeah. yes, do I hear any no's? Thirty-six. Then this one. Do I hear any abstentions? Saying no abstentions, no recusals. Jason. Jason recuses on thirty-six. Hudson. Thank you, Jason. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. So slides um, on to our next slide presentation. Excuse me. Oh, right. There. Okay. So, um, Howard Hughes Corporation came and presented, um, I think, a three-part presentation on landscape design, lighting, and signage. And um, in a nutshell, while we always appreciate. Howard Hughes's efforts and their uh, you know, consultants tend to be some of the best. The presentations were uh, well thought out uh, and they were lengthy and descriptive. Uh, it was our understanding at the end of the night that everything that they presented and the sort of overall vision is leading to a, a different vision that what the community here and New Yorkers at large have for what we call the historic South Seaboard District, and they're running it into a tourist. Next slide, please. They're running it, their design proposals. So, for example, here, they are not going to plant trees because that would require approvals. But if you have them in movable bins, then you can just show us on the left is a tree that they're going to give us now and what that tree might look like in 20 years. God knows where it's going to be because it's movable. Next. These are their design proposals, you know, top of the line, all thought out about seating and the various ways you can put the seating together and then have these umbrellas. And, you know, they have references to uh, ships and seas and, and all that stuff, as you can tell with lattice work. Next. So then they presented us with lighting and uh, I, I don't know. Next. No, I'm sorry. Can we go back one? They, I don't know why I forgot to include. So in this presentation, they gave images of these fabulous places in France, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in Paris, excuse me, of the, um, the, the gardens. Gosh, I'm sorry. It escapes me right. That's the Tuileries Gardens yes. and how cozy and warm and welcoming and supporting of the community and the users and uh that the, the, that was the the you know uh their behind story and driving force but then when the time came uh as you will see now um in when you are coming into south seaport right there the, the main alley i forget the name of that thing 
um, that may right that that becomes an alleyway all lined up with trees and lighting right that directly leads you uh into uh pier 17 and over there of course they have uh attempted to uh use a different light so next slide um so this is their proposal for a single light that is just a marching thing down Fulton Street, right? And that doesn't create for a place to repose and whether it's during the day or at night, you are just being directed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all of this is done. Uh, I'm sure it was, you know, proposed design custom made and then these poles. Remember these poles, okay? Because the light just goes on top of a pole. Next slide. So these are the multiple light heads on those poles. Again, looking rather dry, mm. touristy and directional, even though luckily for us, they propose to use these around the new tin building and of course leading into Pier 17. Uh, next. They look nothing historic. No, they right don't. Yeah, exactly. So you see the red lights, right, is when yeah. coming down Fulton. Look at that. That is not Paris. <laughs> under under a lamp all day. Uh, and uh, exa uh, who knows? And next slide. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, it's just it's just marching. They try to make it sexy with a slide, but the, but you'll see what what is below the slide. It'll make you scream. Uh, yes. So see the, the light poles. They're just marching along, telling you to go down to seventeen. And next slide. <laughs> Don't stop here. Keep going. Oh, that's so yeah. Next slide. And there is that enormous sign that they're going to put by the lighthouse and embed it into the floor material. And what does it say? Seaport. It does not say historic South Seaport District. And this is on either side. In case you're coming from the other side, we would like you to know because people get lost. And I ask, get lost. You know, for what purpose? Yeah. Like, okay, next slide, because I think, do I have an extra slide? Oh, this is uh, the multi heads. Mm. Uh, at, uh, oh, no, look at that. That is not uh, Paris. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> that seat. Oh, and then um, the, 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 um, the new signage. The signage came up, and now we're seeing how the uh, proposed lighting can also act as a signage pole. Oh, oh, oh. Do I have another one? Oh, uh, oh, yes. oh, and then there are these things in case you don't know where the shops are or where you should eat yeah. or where you should go or where you should sit. It's a mall, exactly. And yeah. then next slide. Oh, or is that it? Yeah. yeah, and so here it is with a single pole and all those signs. <laughs> In case you're lost, you don't know how to get to your house. Uh, <laughs> and and I don't like this one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Any other slides? Oh, and I leave the south of the seaport. I mean, uh, that 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 must be eight feet high. Yeah. I'm sorry, eight feet yeah. high in length. And uh, so our um, our discussion was, as I said at the beginning, they do use good consultants. They think it through. It's just not expressing our mission and our wishes, not just of CB1, but of every New Yorker mm -hmm. and the respect that we want this part of town to um, maintain the historic South Seaboard District. And so we are asking for a vote of um, rejection. It's a yes, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a yes to our no. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. Do our Do I have the have a question? Do you have a question? I have a question. I'd actually yeah. like this to be a little stronger. Oh, yes. fabulous. Um, because yes, yes, because yes. none of the, the seaport. What they have is a rebranding. That is their marketing. That is their their language. That is not. That is not what this is. This is the historic. Seaport, mm -hmm. South Street Seaport District. Mm -hmm. So if they were doing marketing and branding that included the proper historic name in proper historic texture, mm -hmm. I think that'd be something different. But I think that needs to be really well put out here. 
is that um, it's a rebranding, which we are not in support of, and that none of this fits with the, I mean, the historic landscape. Yeah, like, and it mars the historic surface of the roadway, right. which is something that makes that district special. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then it destroys. I wouldn't even call it mars. I call it destroys. Destroys like, the, the special surface and uh, the historic surface of the roadway. Yes. It's it's. It's disappointing to try and make it into Paris instead of. But it's not. It's, it's not Paris. They, are, they didn't get there. <laughs> they didn't get there. Oh, oh. They, yeah, there's so much more that they could have done yeah. Yeah. traditional to a historic seaport that could have been really interesting and cool. Make it into a commercial advertisement. That's what right. Yeah. yeah. So. But this has been an ongoing battle, right? Over the last four years, I've seen how it's if going down. If you accept my comments, I would I love to do. include that into the there. I absolutely, so. I accept it. I yeah. Thank you. Didn't know how much bashing in the head we should do because they were so pleased with themselves. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, well, you know, that's that's why I know. Look, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that they did what they were directed to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mimi and then Cheryl. Um, do we have pictures of the historic stuff? I mean, it's historic, so we must have pictures. Uh, but I want to talk about signage to include bathrooms in appropriate yes. space. Yeah. Yes. Because we, that, as they yeah. go back we'll to the drawing board, if they can include that. She'd like, she'd like any wayfinding to include directions to public restrooms. Yes. They don't want that moment. They claim that they do. They so. So they claim that. But the idea of bathrooms and all that goes on it does not match this, this yeah fantasy yeah. version of what the seaport is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a pee in the park. Yeah, I know. They have bathrooms. Yeah, they do. Okay. Yes, I accept Mimi. that. Mimi. Gerald, you're next. We, um, in the building, they have that escalator. You have to go up to the inside. Yeah. Only so my understanding of, of uh, lighting and wayfinding signage is that it would be permanent. And I would like to add in that the, that any redevelopment of this area of the streets down here be presented before the PDC. Well, it has to go to landmarks before it goes well, to public design commission. We know what happens with the landmarks, don't we? <laughs> Why not that go with that, Joe? That they had secret meetings with the yes. Howard Hughes Corporation. <laughs> Let's get that on the record. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. If we're insisting that they stick with the historic name of it, and I think we ourselves need to agree with the historic name of it. So it says here regarding and then environmental improvements to the South Street Seaport area. And then the very next whereas says proposed unit new alterations at the historic South Seaport District. South, those are typos. It should say. Historic that is what just did. No, I shouldn't do that. Where's where is where's Paul yeah, when I need him? Well, it's it's right? It's just it's just it's 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 historic South Street. Historic South Street. Never called her. I think Paul. It was never called. I mean, I grew up there. It was never called Historic South Street Seaport. It was never called the South Street Seaport. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you're going to see a sign that says it's a historic South Street Seaport district. A street sign by the city. I'm sorry, what did you say? So the what? The South The South Street Seaport. Okay, so the no historic. It it's is a, historic. It's a, but so that's not part of the, that's not been part of the name. It's it's not not just lowercase it's lower it's 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 Correct. by the Landmarks exactly. Preservation Commission lower. as the South Street Seaport Historic District. It's the right way. South Street Seaport Historic District. Okay, we'll the South Seaport Historic District. I'm sorry, say it again. I keep that one. It's not that yeah, street. street. It's South Street. I've been taking notes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. South Street Seaport. Historic <laughs> <Star, laughs> District. Yes, right. Thank you. Now, does the docket say environmental improvements? The docket number in the, in the subject line? Mm. Do we know? Because I wouldn't call these environmental improvements. No, design. That's what didn't we? 
we received it. I just copied it. Yeah. Right? Okay. I just copied it from here. Yeah. From the meeting minutes of that okay. thing. So I think we just need to clarify a little bit um, because I don't think that these are actually. I think we should be really strong in saying that the we don't see them as environmental improvements. <laughs> that fit, you know, fitting within the historic. Okay. Gosh, people, we gotta hurry up because you know there's like eight other committees left to the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm okay with your resolution. I, I like, I just in um, going back to them and having them come back to the, book, the uh, drawing board. Oh. I'm really not concerned with it being reminiscent of Paris. I would like it to be reminiscent of a seaport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that should be uh, said. <laughs> Said. And that should be said. So can we add that as we're at? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Can I call the question? No, I wasn't done oh. yet. <laughs> you know, one of the buckets. No, uh, and this will be in the back. So, so the next one that I had was that I actually do not object to the finding. Um, you know, they're finding the neighborhood because we do have a lot of tourists, and I do believe that they provide economic benefit to our community. And if we want to help them find their way around the community, then wayfinding is a basic way that we would do that. And then also as someone who has been at first, um, I like being able to find my way around. So I don't feel like we should discriminate against them by taking away the two this way. Oh, okay. So we're well, not saying that. Stop, stop, stop. God. Rosa, we're not saying that we don't want wayfinding. What we're yeah. saying is we don't like this style of the wayfinding they're doing and the quantity and the quantity and that we do want public restrooms on their way yes okay. oh but we are not objecting to the addition of wayfinding yeah. no just the design yes just the one of the things about the wayfinding in the presentation they cited it as a virtue that the firm that designed the wayfinding is on all these different areas of the city we packed this one there was walk to etc I walk away from that thinking that it all ends up looking like the movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not silly, no, they were saying that the com the consultant had worked on all those projects. Right. 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 And I'm saying the re end result is that everything looks like a version of the same thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, absolutely. The other thing we talked about was about the the plant because they talked about it for 20 years. What we asked for was why don't you put it somewhere in the ground where we'll actually benefit the community. <laughs> So, uh, we can include those. I just want to say, well, I will, Mark. Uh, there is a Rosa, there's a huge sign uh, at the Brooklyn side of Brooklyn Bridge, like Brooklyn Bridge pedestrian, a thousand times a day. We're asked, Where's the Brooklyn Bridge? Because they're all looking at their phone, asking on Google, not signed. But we get your point. Mark, Laura, has, well, Laura, Mark has Mark, before you go, Laura had her hand up before you. Laura. I was just, Laura? yeah, okay, thank you. I was just curious how they can propose a new lighting style is it not it doesn't have to comply with the dot lighting palette is this are they going to pay for their own electricity and maintain their own lights is that what they're planning to do they said they were planning on maintaining yep that's the solution yes the answer is they were maintaining their own light poles so it doesn't have yeah, to be it, approved by DOT, in other words. Yeah, Fulton Street uh, uh, suffers from uh, declassification, de right? Yeah. Yeah. Decommissioning. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but okay. good point. Uh, okay. Thank you, Laura. Yep. Make it as strong as that. Okay. Yeah, I understand. If it's a historic district, why don't they have to adhere to historic lighting district? They are coming to ask for us so they do not have to adhere to historic and they're looking to turn it into Paris. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> okay, now may I talk? Yes. Hi, <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. There you go. Let's do the same thing. Okay. 
Okay, let's who second? Can we have a second? Okay. Let's so take a vote on this. We're gonna take a vote on this. There have been many changes. So we will summarize the changes. So therefore be it resolved in the community board one recommends disapproval of all of the proposals. Within the word as is, we are going to comment that um, it should be reminiscent of its support district, not of parents as presented by the applicant, and not um, of other areas as noted, like Wall Street, Boston, and other We are putting in here that we do not, we do not support the marketing branding. Yes. Rebranding and rebranding. To the C port, it is the South South C port. Thank you. Okay. And With all of those changes, I think I got everything that we could explain. And we don't want to have any embedded signs in the historic site that it's They're movable. They have yeah. a little. Hot for the, 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 oh, and that and that they should investigate the opportunities to put plants in the ground. Oh, we asked for the bathrooms. By the way, they have to have two extra lights at the seaport. They're not needed to take them. This is the person that is farmer and the truck turn into the seaport. Yeah. Okay. All right. Patrick. Let's take a vote. Thank you. Okay. Well, should we use we may call it versus what it's designated as? It's designated as. Well, how about AKA totally known well, as? We will use both names. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because we will say, we will say both names because stop, guys. The point of using both names that we've used in land use and that we know from Paul is that it is not the C. Yes. Okay. Well, well, not from Paul. What Alice said was the designated name. From, the, from city government in South Street, C4. Right. Okay. 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 Recusal. This is Laura. Laura. Laura, motion passes. Next slide. Our final presentation for the night was a new store for item for storefront at 271 Church Street, aka 90 Franklin. And uh focus. Um the top the top slide is um the existing condition on the left, you see it bubbled, right? And on the bottom, you can see that the proposal is to cut away at the, um, the minute I wanted to use this word now, it was the, 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 the history of granite water table. So they told us the story that this uh, retail cannot be rented out. There's a lot of um, hardship. Hey guys. And um, th there's a lot of hardship and uh, I'm the owner of this retail store and that they're requesting that we permit them to change this historical uh, storefront and that we permit them to cut the granite water table down and have an entrance uh, on, on, on the corner of the overall building. They did get permission, as you can see uh, on the lower um, slide on the image, you see in the center, there's a door already. They, they already had that previously done. Now they're coming back. And our discussion was, and, and as I remember, Vera was very adamant that this building has been chipped away bit by bit 
And at some point, we just simply have to stop. And we can't approve this. We cannot further deteriorate the fabric of this historic building when asking for a disapproval. Okay. All the questions. All the questions. Going by affirmation. Are there any no's? Are there any abstentions? No abstentions. Please abstain, Jason. Okay. Are there any refusals? Motion passes. Thank you, Vicki. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Darren Turpudian. Next slide, please, Laura. So, so I think we're bringing at least 10 grand. Um, we've already had a few events, um, but I think back half of we'll get a we'll get another update from them for the end of the year, and then we'll have a um, we'll have another vote uh, in November, December to uh, renew the street fair task force and 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 Joe Giovanni as a promoter in 2024. I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Yeah, I, I, my opinion on on the, on the street fair, right? I think they're they're pleasant to have. It's a nice change for the street use. But I, I noticed that the vendors are usually the same. Yeah. There could be more variety. I don't know if it's our place to say, but yeah. there could be some variety in the, the type of vendors they have. Yeah, yeah I think I, I, I share that concern. Um, I think if you go back maybe it, uh, maybe eight years, I think they have improved over the past. You know, I, I, hard to yeah, say, but, old, but certainly between like 2015 and 2019, I think there was some improvement. Um, I, I think uh, I think there is still some some ways to go in this. Um, I think Francis, you asked a question. I um, did. I asked the question. If, if you if you're walking around other parts of uh, Manhattan and you see interesting mm -hmm. um, vendors in like I don't know Hell's Kitchen Street Fair, let's say, mm -hmm. um, if you go to nycstreetfairs.com and give them that information, it's they, that vendor that you really like at Hell's Kitchen you know, may may or may not be interested in join in joining a street fair downtown. Mm -hmm. so that's another way to that's another way to do it. They want to increase their database. That's a, that's the issue. Let's They've been using the same Francis. Data. Thank you. Uh, of course. Cool. Well, not you, Pat. We'll let the young yeah. gentleman who never says a word. No, oh, thank you. Um, how you. I'm wondering if this is under purview or not, but uh, I did see for a lot of the um, Latin American street fairs, uh, there were a number of uh, coal powered barbecues, um, which uh, I live on the sixth floor of my building and I can smell it a little bit. Um, so. I was wondering if we could have some message about using um, electric stoves instead outside. Right. Um, but where would they plug in? That, both for air quality and also. Well, uh, that, that's not Joe. Right. That's not the Latin festival ones that you're talking about. Those are yeah. individually permitted ones through SAPO, which will come to okay. Betty's committee. Okay, thanks. I, mean, I think our street, I mean, the, the, the gyro stands, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, are also. Uh, are they, those coal fire, I, I don't know. I haven't all, it, but I think, they all, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we'll see them on a regular basis, but yeah, yeah I guess that's some a, coal. more of a safe old issue than anything. Yeah. Um, first of all, yeah, going back years and years and years, we had a lot more, uh, we had worse vendors, so we had better vendors now. But Joe also said that because of the pandemic, a lot of the vendors that we had, say, like, you know, five years ago have not come back. Or have you know have either gone out of business or moved out of the city, and so again he is looking for new and varied vendors. We bring this up all of the time to him. So if anybody sees anyone, as Francis said, in a, at another street fair, or you know anyone who wants to be part of a street fair, to please let them know. Okay. Sir, Mr. Stewart, pay anything for Joe? We don't. Uh, we don't. Hey, Joe, he pays us. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Well, I'm, I'm sure what it is. 
Yeah, because we sponsor we sponsor the street fair, so it's like it's him, it's it's, it's Mardi Gras Productions and and um and CB One are like the co-sponsors. Yeah, he, he gets to, he gets to the uh, bank and he organizes it that way. All right. Any other anything else? Okay. Fantastic. Well, we'll be back in a few months with another update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Betty K. And I just want to say this is so perfect. Going right after the Howard Hughes presentation. So let's go. Six to five, if there are three resolutions. And if you focus, we can move through the other. The first one, if you'll switch mine. Get uh Joe, can you move over so they can get a little closer to the mic so oh. Lauren can hear her? Andrometers. Is doing business as the ride. They purchased the company that used to do this particular route, which was called doing business as experience the ride. They're really taking the place and the bus stop that existed for this other group that went out of business in 2020. And so when they have two bus stop requests, one at 200 Water Street, which is the beginning of the tour, and the other at 291 Broadway, and this is midway through the tour. The tour ends, and CB2 is hearing about that particular stop. Here's the net. Now you can see the bus they even bought the equipment from. It's now still as the ride, and they are already um, doing their tours in Midtown, so they did start there before coming downtown. This is their first foray into downtown. You go to the next. And you can see this is a slightly different setup. This is a picture inside the bus. So there is a certain amount of they see themselves as entertaining while moving along. And that was part of the issue was this was going to be anything outside the bus as well as inside the bus. Which they swear was there isn't going to be outside, but anyway, next. The route, this will show you the route. You can see the first two stops are in our district, and they're the ones where the bus stops we're going to talk about tonight. Are. Next. This is what was given to you by the DOT. So this bus stop is in front of 200 Water Street. Um, bus company again is here on a tour. Uh, it is for the request is for pickups and drop offs Monday through Sunday, so it's every day of the week. And 11 a.m. is the first one. And the last one is at 9 p.m. At this particular stop, because it's the first, it is on the hour of the stops. Current regulation, this is already a, an existing bus stop, no standing, so there is no parking to be lost. There's no change. And in fact, the, it is an operational bus stop. The MTA is M15, the QM11, and the QM. 120, the QM25 all stop here. The falls still sign posted for Experience the Ride, which is the company they purchased and they're replacing. And the sidewalk is also wide, which is pretty very wide. There's a next. You get the picture of. Then if you can see where uh, the connection bus is, at the other bus stop on this particular block of Water Street. If you look down at the distance, there's no legally parked black car down near the end. Mm -hmm. That stops at the bus stop. That's where being requested. Mm -hmm. Next. Mm -hmm. It's more of a close up of the particular bus stop that would be asked for. Oh. And you can see the 12 foot. Yeah. And in fact, there's seating and other things going on on the sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. Well, there are already buses stopping there. And there was this bus that always did stop there, so there's really no change. Mm -hmm. Our next. The other stop is in front of 391 Broadway, so it's in Tribeca. Again, this is very much the same setup. The 12 foot wide sidewalk, uh, it is already signposted in the bus stop with no standing. It already is an existing MTA bus stop, in this case, for the Express 27 and the Express 28. We've already signed posted for experience the ride, so they're simply replacing the stop that was used by the, the other company. And again, this time we're stopping at 20 minutes after the hour, but it's the same frequency, the same hours overall, same days. Next, you get to see a picture of it. 
This particular street, the Broadway does have a bus lane, and it is adjacent to the, the lane that they would be stopping on. There, as you can see, the bus stop in front of 290 Broadway. But yeah, no parking would be displayed, no bus lane. So if you go to the next one, I think that's then. But yeah, therefore, be it resolved that uh, we really supported the request of John Mature doing business with the bride. It's like seeing bus stops to drop off and do pickups in front of 200 Water Street and 391 Broadway. Uh, the buses do not slow or interfere with the movement of pedestrians. There was still a lingering concern about outside entertainment, uh, which we've been confirmed is illegal anyway by the DOT. Uh, but anything that would slow or interfere with the movement of pedestrians, bicycles, or traffic along the road. And so I'll turn so the paper resolution says 291 Broadway, which I didn't like and was going to cause me to vote no. Well, you're saying that this should really be 391 Broadway in Soho. No, it's not in Soho. It is in our district. It is. It's right there. Oh, okay. So I'm a no. All right, hold on, guys, 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 guys. No crosstalk. Let's get one by one by one. Gerald, then Jeff. Um. I mean, I I would suggest adding in unless the buses slow or interfere with uh, existing public transportation, and then the movement of pedestrians and so on, because I don't want to slow existing MTA buses or or the downtown connector. Yeah, that's not not really because really. of the bus lane that's dedicated to public transportation. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But it's still traffic, and again, there's no change. Okay. Next. Yeah. yeah I, I just wanted to clarify clarification on the no change. It sounds like this is exactly the same bus stops that exactly the same buses have been using, and it's simply a different company operating the buses now, and so they need this permission. But they, it literally is no change from the existing condition. No change. The other company went out of business in the end of 2020, and this company. Came in and purchased their routes, their equipment. Their mm -hmm. the first of all, um, as always, these are incredibly important presentations, really helpful. Um, it, is it before 2020? How many years did the company exist? Or more or less, was it some long standing 14 years? Oh, okay. And was it the same exact thing where, like, it was an entertainment bus where people would be lining up to do la da ra ra, whatever it is you do on a bus? Evidently, yeah. there used to be some actors who would come out at certain points outside the bus. And I don't know what they did, but they did something. So it was the same thing as what's being presented. They're not doing that. Anymore. The way it was presented by a yeah, fellow who was presenting for drama store who knows they're not going to do that. He's so very personally saying, but nevertheless, the DOT also weighed in and said, you know what, that's illegal, you can't do that. Yeah, it's just, it's just unfortunate that they can't be more like a tourist bus rather than like an entertainment bus. It's like, I don't know if we get another public thing, but anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess that, yeah, I think that I have more. Francis? I'll, I'll take in that ride, and I, it was very enjoyable. And what happens is that they get to certain spots, and there's there's entertainers. They describe it they as on the bus, and they they. But Perry says there'll be no more entertainers on the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I would be singing on the bus. No, the entertainment beforehand used to be outside. Mm. Oh, 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 no, no. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It, it was fun, but Viva La New. Yes. Obviously, the MTA bus, I don't adhere to the timetable perfectly, but there is a timetable. The, the, it said that the pickup time was like 20 after the hour. Do we know that that does not line up to the actual MTA timetable? Does that come up at all? That's what the DOT does okay. to clarify the spots. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. The passengers on the bus, they never get off the bus. Is that correct? Or... <laughs> 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 Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Obviously, the only one they would do that would be the one in Carbetha, but the other is the first, and then we don't have to see me. Two has to work at the last stop, but the last stop is often in the plant. So the one stop. Okay. Vicki? And then Brendan, and then Jenna Paul. Thank you. I just want to point out that um, we do live on John Street, and uh, where it terminates at 200 Water Street, that little Starbucks, mm -hmm. that is like the only place the entire block can sit and repose in peace. And in the last three years, the buses weren't stopping there. Thank God. Well, the Starbucks closed. Closed. Stop. Stop. No, my point is that that little plaza, the pop, not I don't do Starbucks, but that little pop is so important to the residents of John Street. We have nowhere to run out of the congestion uh, scaffolding. And that little plaza was something that I would enjoy sitting at, you know, Sundays and Mondays. You're not Saturdays. driving the bus on the plaza. The plaza is still right. No, I just don't want 150 people coming up, getting off, getting on, you know, getting around. But There's no room for me, city. let alone another 100 people off the bus. And, okay. Brendan? Similar, to that, what? Uh, similar to that at 291 Broadway, my concern, because I've stayed on this, was that there are going to be people lining up for this. If you go, if you walk down Broadway right now for all the other tourist things, they are kind of all over the sidewalk. Some like are on the backside, some are closer to the street, but they're tourists. They don't know how New York sidewalks work. <laughs> and I think this is just really a totally uh, area. Also, right in front of this is like a residential stop. Yeah. So sure, again, yes, there's already bus stops, mm -hmm. but then now the people that are at that building right there have to come out to scattered tourists right there if they want to get on. I said, is it going to be 100? Maybe not, but it's 20, mm -hmm. and that's annoying on an already small oh, size. Oh, thank okay. you. Here, here. Okay, so with all of those comments, are we ready to call the question? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, do I hear? Uh, I'll, I'll assume that's yes. a second. Seconds. There Seconds. we go. All right, so we're going to go by affirmation. If you're online, please make sure your cameras are on. Please don't think you have to ask again. Um, okay, so are there any no's? Okay, keep your hands up and I'm going to point and then you say your name. In the no. back. No, Russo, no. Mariama, no. Ever, no. Thompson, no. No. No, sir, no. Are there any abstentions? Blank abstains. Uh, Kuchia abstains. No, no. Abstain. Forsberg abstains. Sun abstains. So, a coal abstains. Can I have an extra time? Flores abstains. Flores abstains. All right. So, those are Canel's a no. Canel's a no. Okay. All right. Let me count the no. Oh, you got Mitch back in. Canel's a no. Maybe. Canel's a no. And Mitch Foreman abstains. So, let me uh, online. Laura, are you? And Sertha. That is required. Almost in the area. Okay. Can you count abstentions? Oh, Gabrielle, you need to have your camera on. And are you voting yes, no, or abstaining? Yeah. Should do that one more time. Rossi voting yes. Okay, thank you. And I'm right. abstaining. I don't know if you heard that. I'm sorry. I think my, my sound was off. Thank you, Laura. So start all right. So we will add up the abstentions and the no's because that's so ten abstentions. Seventeen. So motion I don't think that means motion passes. There's thirty eight of us. We need to do our whole call. Okay. We're going to go back and do this one roll call because it's really close and I'd like it to be clear for the applicant. So it should be. No, we don't need to then because yeah, it passes. Motion passed. Is that, is that right? Do I have a minute here? Okay, then I don't have to change. 
Then we're good. Motion passes. Yeah, that's what the final tally was. Um, 2017. Yes. 21, 17. 21, 17. Yeah. 21. That's 38. We have 38 of us here, right? 38 of them. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Betty, are we in? Sorry. Um, two other resolutions. Next slide. Next slide. It's fine. 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 Of establishing a photo noise violation monitoring device program. And in fact, Andrew Chang spoke about this in the president's office. Where did it stand from? This one would amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to establishing a photo noise violation monitoring device program. Uh, it also established guidelines for the type, the calibration of the devices, the rights and responsibility of motorists and law enforcement with respect to when they're finalizing how to legalize something. They're already going to do measuring the noise. Now they're going to figure out how to make it legal. Illegal. It's illegal. Illegal. Right now, there's a way to protect anybody on any side. They're going to set the parameters to allow. Next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Department of Environmental Protection currently does employ only one photo noise violation device. However, and the, the ruling, the rule is that the sound must be louder than 85 decibels. That's important. Like a lot. I got 50 feet, so it's not even right next to it. The DP plans to employ seven such devices by the end of this year. We need a hundred of them by 2028. Yeah. Hence the importance of having a legal structure around them. How to calibrate each other's lip doors. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, the New York City Noise Code was created to reduce, just so you know, and this is on the DEP website, the City of New York's DEP. Uh, this, the making, creation, or maintenance of excessive and unreasonable and prohibited choices in city limits. And it affects the menace to the public health, the comfort, convenience, safety, and welfare. So again, this is written at a standard that is much more sensitive to the public than it's going to cause deafening. Oh, and that's important when we talk about what 85 decibels and what best practices. Kind of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the World Health Organization recommend environmental noises below 70 decibels. Over 24 hours and 75 decibels, if you're talking about an eight hour period, prevent noise induced hearing loss. Again, that's a whole different standard than the point of the New York City regulation, which is comfort and well being. Yeah. Uh, the EPA also specifies limits for speech interference and annoyance five decibels for outdoor activities and 45 decibels for indoor activities. If you want to know, of life because the bar downstairs is noisy. They're talking over 45 decibels. Mm. Our EP is saying over 85 decibels at 50 feet, which is a really tough standard. Mm. That'll make sense of the resolution. Next. That's, That's what you hear in your home. But they don't specify with our noise regulation. It's just a great help. A study that involves uh, 4 million people for over a decade, so a large number, found that at just 35 decibels, the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease increased by 2.9% and went up by that amount for every 10 decibels. Mm -hmm. So it is a real serious health concern, and it's the triggering of heart, heart attack. And it's not just the creation of it that they're talking about. According to the World Health Organization, the average road for traffic noise is about 53 decibels. For an average aircraft noise, like helicopters, uh, exposure above 45 decibels are associated with adverse health effects. So again, the New York City road regulations are way above what anybody else thinks. The modified mufflers and car horns are routinely produced over in excess of 110 decibels. Well, we're Yeah. Can we go a little less on facts and a little bit more 
to the resolution. I'm hoping that people have read through this already. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, just to, let's keep it all. Yeah. yeah. Let's make an assumption. We don't need to Yeah. No, this is all good information. You got the It is not your fault. Can I answer that? Stop. Next slide, Lauren. Yeah, so in our district, again, it's that's why there's certain places that are worse than others. And yes, we do hear these things next. So therefore, be it resolved uh, that Manhattan Community Board want to enforce the City of New York's Department of Environmental Protection to install more photo noise violation monitoring devices as soon as possible, because they're going to do it anyway, in order to identify vehicles violating the city's noise ordinance. That we support the passage of the law and urge our council member and the, the honorable Mr. Marte to support the bill and get monitors installed in our district where the noisiest roads have been identified. Um, there's one more. Next slide. We also urge the Department of Environmental Protection to really review their 85 decibels at 50 feet. Okay, that's the last one on this one. I have two hands that are up, three. Uh, you can think help. really carefully, people, if you have to ask it. Justine, your first turn is first. Yeah, thank you. My question just is with the photo picture, is it taking pictures of the car and the person's face or just the license plate, like for sure. red light cameras? Do you know? No, I don't know in the law. It doesn't work. No, I think the law says it's not the face. Okay. So say it usually is with New York City. Okay. First, yeah, and then Mark, and then Gerald. I'm, I'm and then there. I'm living proof that you can live across 60 Hudson Street and with a lot of medication survive. <laughs> Be that as it may, it's this community board and uh, council person, uh, Gerson, who spent years along with Neighbors Against Noise, which is part of this board, codifying and reducing the noise levels that were legal and allowing certain additional measures to 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 seek restitution when there was too much noise however i, I just want to say i hope it's strong enough in the resolution 85 decibels is enormous and each decibel increases algorithmic it's not arithmetic so that's a huge amount of noise in fact the city code in for the law that was passed is in steps and 85 is way off the charts i think it's 55 decibels from inside your window that constitutes a violation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bruce. Mark, I said you were next. And then Gerald. What's funny in the requirement here? Let's take a word. Somebody's sweating. Oh, sorry. Hi, can you go back and see specifically if you want another one of the four million? Well, if we're saying a study, it should be it should be um, noted what we're talking about. She has the list at number six, right? Is it that the okay. footnotes? It's in the footnote. Yeah, there is. That's it. Really cool. So it, it's uh, something called something. I can't even say it. Okay, Justine, thank you. Uh, Mark, so, it's noted. Uh, Next. So yeah, the so honestly, the last few years, I wouldn't trust anything the World Health Organization said. <laughs> okay. But um, I just think that this is an uh, I was just in Washington Heights, and there were. Kids riding on motorcycles without mufflers, it's, it, that's not enforced. This is just going to be the same thing as, as, as these uh, uh, speed cameras. It's going to go after uh, specific parts and it's going to be uh, uh, selective enforcement. And uh, so I'll, 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 I'll totally, totally opposed to this. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Gerald? Government money grant. Gerald? I, I was just going to say that. that if they actually enforce this, that's nothing to do with Justin pricing because they'll keep <laughs> I like that one. I like that. Okay, funny. Thank you, Eric, Brandon, and then a question. Yeah, cool. New yeah. comments, no snark. Let's roll. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, I voted against this in committee because I, I don't support. Okay, first, I agree. Excessive noise is, is, is um, effect on quality of life and, and health. I'll go with the study. But I don't support having. Government surveillance, 24 7 government surveillance on any time this threshold is passed. If you already have, there's already enforcement tools available to NYPD. If there's a vehicle violating this, they can stop it 
you know, for violating the device code. Exactly. But a problem is they're not enforcing it. I mean, if if the NYPD is not going to do their job, then maybe we should get the New York New York City Sheriff to enforce these rules. But I definitely don't want a listening device on 24-7, not taking into account situations of daily life or situations. Thank you for your point. Brendan. Um, I just want to point out, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think another board is also working on something similar, right? Uh, community board, and then we were partially trying to support that. Is that what this? And yeah, CB6 originally did it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, with all that, I'm calling the question. Second. Okay. This is an affirmation vote. If you do not agree, are there any no's? Uh, Galloway, no. All right, hold on. Hands up. I go around the room. Galloway, no. I heard that. James, no. You votes no. Nimsley, no. Chapman votes no. Wait, wait, slower. Nimsley. Nimsley. Chapman. Are there any no's online? Yes, star votes no. Rossi, no. Thank you. Okay. Are there any abstentions in the room? Again, hands up. Gold, please, abstain. Could you abstain? Boys, we're just there. Abstain. They're abstaining. Call abstains. Oh, abstains. Okay. Sorry. Blank abstain. Okay. Are there any abstentions online? Are there any recusals? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next one, Lauren. Oh, you're way off today. One, one, two, three. Okay, six abstentions and Opposed. Eight opposed, six abstention. Motion passes. Okay. Lauren, next slide. We have 10 more resolutions. Oh, wait, nine more. Yeah. So, I mean, Betty, we're going to seriously pass through this because people should have read about towing vehicles and, the, and understand that this is about Im exactly what it says on the agenda that lack improperly displayed or obscured valid license plates, registration stickers, inspection stickers, or vehicle identification numbers. If you read the resolution, well, we are going to get there, Mitch. Okay, because I don't want that to get the wrong place. Mitch, let Betty keep going, please. I have to leave at 10. Yeah, and we, we will just, guys, we will be kicked out of here. So let Betty, let, has everybody read the resolution? Let's do it. Yeah. Lauren, go to the therefore be it resolves, please. There you go. Okay, so here's the therefore be it resolved. There is a council to pass and then our council member to support legislation that increases the penalty for vehicles that are parked or operated with missing fraudulent, obstructed, or defaced license plates. We also support the, this particular bill uh, to, keep, uh, to keep it focused on missing fraudulent, obstructed, and defaced license plates. <laughs> vehicles with registrations or inspections and expired within 60 days to be ticketed in accordance with the existing laws, but not towed. Next slide. <laughs> also, we urge the police department and the Metropolitan, the MTA, uh, and the Port Authority, and the mayor, and the governor to increase enforcement and hold vehicle owners accountable for these same plate moments. I'm calling the question. Second. 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 Uh, it's been called and seconded. If you do not support it, vote your conscience. I beg of you. Meetings are going to drag on this long when someone's talking and, and we're going to rush through everything. It has to be managed better. Time. Thank you, Mark. I'd be delighted. And if you would arrive on time, we can start earlier. So we have quorum. That'd be great. Okay. So we're running by affirmation. Are there any abstentions? Okay. Last name. Airman abstain. James abstain. Russo, no. Are there any? No. Kuchia, no. Are there any no's or abstentions online? This is Are there any? There are no recusals. Motion passes. Betty, thank you. We're going to take Tricia. Who is leaving shortly um, on an on a plane? So, Tricia, thank you for hanging. Uh, please, I'm going to beg of you for your report. If you're still there, no more than four minutes. Yeah, no, it'll be quite quick. Um, can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay, good. I have headsets today. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, we had one item. There's no resolutions. I can very quickly say that Kelly McGuire, our District 2 superintendent, joined us and um, gave us some great information. The biggest one really is that they are going to instill an accelerated program uh, in at Wagner and Baruch. Uh, it's an experimental accelerated program for kids who are, you know, ahead of grade level, first of its kind. So that's going to be interesting. They're also working on aligning the curriculums um, in uh, K to 8. Right now, as some of you might be aware, we've got a couple different kinds of math happening. And um, so, they, they, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so they want to align that because they don't think it's a great situation. They do want to continue letting people have, letting schools have um, curriculums that they can prove and be independent with, but they are going to align in math and English. So those are the big takeaways. That's all. Thank you. Any questions for Tricia? No. Trisha, have a safe flight. Thank you very, very much for hanging with us. I apologize for that. So Thanks, late. everybody. No worries. Thank you. And Trisha is signing off for the meeting. Okay, licensing is next. Susan Cole, please let us know. 319 Greenwich, 100 Pearl Street, 45 John are all together. And that's how it goes. <laughs> No controversy. We got our hours. We did what we wanted. We gave some a little extended, but we we worked it through. So there is no issue. The only one is the last one, and that's very quick. Okay, so we're going by affirmation, and I'm calling the question. Second. Second. Great. Everybody is in favor. If not, are you opposed? Please raise hands for anybody who is opposed. Seeing no opposition, are there any abstentions? My brain's fried. Seeing no abstentions, are there any recusals? <coughs> Great, motion passes on those three. Susan, take it away. Last one. 111 John Street stated at the meeting they will they were not going to be seeking a public assembly number of 120, but would it, uh, uh, so they wouldn't be a large venue and they would have no more than 74 occupants. Um, and so I am asking you to approve the following amendment which states, uh, whereas, where it, it's in, we will insert it, the establishment is a restaurant with a total of 2,220 square feet, which includes the two food counters, 19 tables, 38 seats, and a stand-up bar with 23 seats. The space can hold the capacity, of, of a public capacity of 120 people, but the applicant has assured the uh, community board licensing committee, they will not exceed the occupancy of 74 persons. And we will put that in the resolution in addition. So, that's very last Any questions? No, great. Call the question. That's Second. 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 Yeah. Are there any abstentions? Well, wait, are there any no's? We're running by affirmation. Are there any, are there any opposed? Seeing no one opposed, are there any abstention? No, 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 I'm not abstaining. I have a question. I have abstaining. Seeing there are no abstentions, <laughs> are there any refusals? <laughs> okay, motion passes. Susan, the floor is still yours. I want you all to hear clearly what was stated at the meeting that um, Pat and Tammy and I attended with Commissioner Fan today. And that is that when you hear any noise or a, a, a bar or something is disturbing you and it is against the stipulation, I always tell everybody to call 311 and then call the office. You are now to go to the SLA website as well and note your complaints. Wow. Everybody, please do that. We will share in the newsletter this week <laughs> and permanently where to file complaints with the SLA. Cool. They do not want you calling 311 anymore because they said 
that sometimes the police show, sometimes the police do not show, and they're not getting complete records. What they would truly like is complete information and complaints for them. But I would say, in contra, that you should still call 311 as well as the SL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, please. It'll be a link. It'll be a link. You know, perfect. I'm gonna chance it. So we're into it. Okay, Susan, are we done? I think so. Pat, we were. I had no so. We had no meeting. We have no resos. I want to enjoy all this. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay, then it's okay, me. Okay, yeah? moving down. Battery Park City. City Committee. It's just Team Kucha. Okay. You have one reso, and please note, you will get three so minutes for your report. I got less than three, so then I've got two, two things to talk about. Okay, so the battery, South Battery Park Sil South Battery Park City Resiliency Project. Um, two things to note that it's in the it's in our uh, newsletter. Yeah. Rick Fo Rick Fogarty is the Community Construction Liaison. His phone number is 917-624-54009. His website, is uh, his email is sbpcrinfo at bpca.newyorkny.gov. Um, anybody who has complaints should reach out to him directly and also copy me so I know. Um, I also want to make note that the BPCA agreed to convey to Rick Fogarty the need to start pile driving and other really loud noise that's going on in South Wagner Park um, after 9 a.m. rather than starting at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., which is what's been happening. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, all right, next, feedback on the activation of the play space on the pedestrian greenway between first and first place and second place um, along the greenway, right? There's a lot of negative feedback at the community board at our meeting. Um, I also want to let you know that the BPCA has a survey. It's called the Temporary Playscape Survey. Um, issues were raised by Betty Kay about the quality of the survey. I actually went to it. I agree with her and her issues. Um, it assumes the respondent wants additional activities and amenities in the space. Um, and I'm going to tell you that if you go to it and you have a comment, I left blank and you can do that. What do you want more of? What I wrote in was I want whatever I want. I wanted less basically. And um, you have to find that website and get to the survey from the BPCA website and it gets you to the survey. Okay, and then we have that. All right, now that's it for my report. And now the resolution. Um, you heard um, Connor from Chris Marte's office talk about the scaffolding in Battery Park City. I'm going to assume you read the resolution, so I'm not going to go through it. If anybody has questions about it after, but what I do want to do is that I email this to you, Tammy, and maybe Mimi. Um, uh, thank you, Jeff, for putting together the, the resolution. Betty K uh, put in some little wordsmithing, so I'm going to read it for the record. It's just the reason, therefore, be it resolved, and you have it in writing. This is what I'm reading. Therefore, be it resolved that CB1 asks the Department of Buildings to work with the contractors for and the management companies of Battery Park City residential buildings in order to avoid the closure of the accessible routes to and from buildings and to identify ways to minimize shedding and avoid the closure of park areas and other public spaces and therefore be it resolved. CB1 asks the Battery Park City Authority to provide support including a hardship, state, hardship statement filed with the DOB that will help Battery Park City residential buildings minimize shedding and avoid closures of park areas and other public spaces that are required of them by the DOB. And therefore, be it resolved, CB1 urges the Department of Buildings to balance what is needed for pedestrian safety with quality of life concerns caused by the closure of parks and public spaces. The historical practices required in Battery Park City and the current practices in the rest of Manhattan call for less shedding and fewer closures of park areas and public spaces than are being requested for work on then are being requested for work on residences in Battery Park City. Uh, Questions? Isn't it supposed to be it's not shedding, it's sidewalk sheds. Oh, it could be sheds. Sidewalk sheds slash scaffolding. Yes. 
Okay, if that's the proper terminology, I'm, I well, think the that... proper term is shedding, but um, yeah, but colloquially people, people call it scaffolding, but scaffolding. the proper term is the sidewalk. It's shedding. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Because it's on ground floor, scaffolding is about. This is all about ground floor, so it's sidewalk shedding. It's really sidewalk shedding, shedding, and it's all about. And so you know, the DOB's law hasn't changed; it's just their interpretation of it. And from our committee's perspective, and from what we heard from the from uh, the contractors and the buildings in Battery Park City, what they have said was that um, years past we never had to go past the um, sidewalk, and you never went into the street. That's what the law says. But the law, deal of you guys who know who are architects, okay. it's, it says the shedding has to be half the height of the building, and half the height of the building in most places in Manhattan, you can't. You get to the sidewalk, you're done. In Battery Park City, you could go the 400 feet out or 500 feet out, depending on the height of the building. And it does just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that's what we're saying here. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll call the question. Second. Fantastic. Assuming everyone's a vote by affirmation, are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? Good, thank you. I think we're done. I think we're done. All right, moving along. I don't, I don't think anybody online is something. Patrick. All right, two resolutions out of land use this month. Uh, the first one is a non controversial, would be unanimous. Um, as part of the EDC's management of uh, vendors in the historic South Street Seaport District, um, we were asked to give an opinion on proposal by uh, Top View, which is the parent company of Liberty Foods. Uh, thank you. Uh, their proposal is to uh, implement a temporary three month trial for two small pop up kiosks. One um, in the street bed of right uh, on, on course, at South Street and Fulton, and the other across the street, effectively on South Street in, in Pier 16. Uh, these are to sell tickets for the Liberty Cruise boats that lead out of Pier 36 which is at Clinton and South Street in uh, CD3. Um, we had a lot of questions really for the applicant um, and ended up voting, um, you can see the design is in the, in the resolution. So we had a lot of questions around the design um, and whether the applicant had really tried to figure out other alternatives around storefronts, um, what other options they might have, and whether they're really giving enough of an economic benefit Back from South Street Seaport District, um, Historic South Street District, and the museum itself. Um, so we were a no with conditions. There are seven separate conditions there, and I'll assume everyone um, has a resolution and understands the conditions. So I'll entertain any questions. Seeing none. It just has to do with the wording. We should keep South Street his school, South Street Seaport Historic yeah. District. I'll tell you why. All uh, right, because in our prior resolutions for land use, we use this phrase: yeah. South Street Seaport District. Let it be consistent. Correct, Joe. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I'm going to change my vote to a no because this person is taking people from the seaport to one of the 36th Street. No, the other one. Yes, 36 It's out of our district. All right. So people are coming into our district, and these guys want to take them out. <laughs> and I'm against this. Well, we're opposing. Yes. yes. I'm against this resolution. Yeah, but we're voting against No, the, 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 no but we're voting for the bit. I don't like this, all this. All right. We just should say no because they're not, they're killing our business here. An un unfriendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying we oppose it. Uh, yeah, we're saying we're saying we're against. Yeah, I know, but I want. I don't like. You it. don't want it to be unless we want to say no because they're taking away our business. Well, we pretty much said that they have okay, to. Okay, then I'll have to fight. So I agree with you, and that's why it says unless. You either unless you have to yeah. here or you don't. Yes, second in. So I call the question. Okay, we're going to go by if everyone in affirmation, because you're not last. Perfect. All right. Um, are there any opposition? I'd say. 
Council no. Uh, Turner abstains. Thompson no. No. Airman, did you come out? No. no. Okay. No Are there? Oh, Zelter. Zelter abstain. Okay. So two abstentions, one no. Are there any other votes online? Okay. Are there any recusal? Motion passes. Thank you, Patrick. All right, the second one uh, is the 60 Wall Street application. Um, this is an application for a modification of special permit and restricted declarations uh, for 60 Wall Street, specifically for the covered pedestrian space. Um, I will assume everybody's read the resolution. Um, the committee is, and it landed at a um, disapproval with conditions, so no conditions. Um, I will just say that um, a couple of observations. Um, one, we were disappointed with the timing of the application. That was a big problem for us because um, leadership of CG1 and the committee had asked the applicant to uh, do what it can to, to forestall um, certification or, or rather referral of the application by the Department of City Planning because doing so at the end of June really gives us from July 10th to today, 15 days to really consider this application. And we were supposed to have 45 days. And originally we thought we were going to have 60, but fine, 45. You, you, you just we needed more time to consider it. We had a lot of questions um, and, and you know a lot of concerns, frankly. Um, so be that as it may, the applicant chose to push forward, and here we are. Um, we, we went over the application very carefully. And I'll say that I think this resolution is a balance of different concerns in the room about the design, about preservation, um, about uh, promoting business interests in Lower Manhattan, particularly where there is an obvious um, retail, or I'm sorry, an obvious commercial office space problem. Um, and, and obviously the applicant um, just highlighting the fact this building is 1.7 million square feet of the 100% vacant of the Watson Village Bank. Um, so those were big considerations, and I'll say that this um, resolution was a great exercise in consensus building, um, but we uh, came to a no with conditions and happy to entertain any questions. No, no, I'm, I'm supporting the resolution, but I just I was curious during the meeting, during the testimony in the public session mm -hmm. about 20 exchange place, particularly because that building, the ownership and the residents were previously vehemently opposed to 3,500 people coming to the area for sleep no more. And all of a sudden, seven, they, they welcome 7,500 people. Something is weird there. Um, they, they, did not, they did not present the meeting, nor did they offer any testimony or letters. I think I should say. Thanks. That actually reminds me. We 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 addressed this in the resolution, but we received a number of letters um, that the applicant team provided us with letters of support from the downtown association. Uh, sorry, yeah, the downtown yeah. association, the downtown alliance. Mm. Um, some of the neighboring so the banks, the businesses, yeah, yeah, and some of the neighboring properties. To be fair, uh, uh, and we also had a number of letters from historical and preservationists, some and architects as well, speaking of the importance of, of this space. Um, but I'll say those particular folks who spoke with public session were not at our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will say that there was a form letter that many of the letters that we did receive were based on a form letter um, circulated by the lobbyists. By lobbyists. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The yeah. lobbyists in support or against the lobbyists. By the lobbyists for the applicant. There's just one thing the presenter said, um, you know, earlier. About this, and you just did too, and you did as well. Seven seven thousand five hundred office workers, but office workers aren't returning to work right. in droves. So it really makes no sense economically how you know that building will be sustainable as, as an office mm -hmm. um, space. You know, I mean, did they, has anyone addressed that? Well, they're moving ahead. So this, this this is a piece of a larger puzzle, right? So they're. For sure, moving ahead with um, renovation and reappointment of the property, and it's going forward as a, a commercial office space. Um, there was the landmarks process last year. Um, John Blank on the name of the, the, the phrase, but basically that it has to uh, be appropriate to the building across from it. Um, sorry. Our relationship. There we go. Um, so, you know, there are, and, and, and that relates to the um, exterior facade building and, and some changes that are going to be made there. So that, that that's sort of underway. This is just one piece of that puzzle. Okay. Bruce? Uh, I guess everyone knows this is an extremely controversial uh, pop. It, it 
it, it, it was somewhat reviled when it came out. It was like an expressions of postmodernism, and, and now it's been considered architecturally one of the great, the greatest examples of postmodernist style. And every preservationist that I know wants it preserved. Part of the goal of the redesign de facto privatizes and, com and commodifies that idea where there are restaurant spaces, it, it, it takes out all of that, all of that architecture. And I think we have to tread very carefully on, uh, on what we're doing regarding this space. I also want to say that Deutsche Bank's exit has nothing to do with the pandemic. It's not our problem that right. Deutsche Bank was skewered internationally for every kind of illegality. It has, right. right. So that's not our, I don't, I don't, Think that that's part of this discussion. <laughs> Just a quick question. I'm not sure what you mean by what you're saying. Are you? Is it? Are It seems like the end is we disapprove the application. So why don't we just stop there without the conditions? And it's a question, right. not a suggestion. I, agree. I don't yeah. know enough to understand I mean, it's, it. It's, but I also appreciate the conditions because you're asking them for. Landmarking and whatever else. So I guess my question is that is like, tell me why we want to. Why is isn't it stronger to say we just don't like this, don't do it, or do you think there's a reason? No, I, I think so. first of all, I think part, partly the old adage that you don't know, just say no, it, it's going to happen. It's the same thing. Okay, okay, I think the same conditions thing. are important, whether they're symbolic or not. But yes. particularly the first condition. By the way, I got to apologize. This is just a drafting error. It starts with number eight, but yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There's a lot of conditions or something like that. Um, the very first condition, and one of the most important parts of this, is again, related yeah. to the timing. Um, you know, the LPC has indicated that they think this is important enough that they want to hear and review it. Right. Um, the applicant, he, what? Jumped it. You could figure it out, right? They didn't want to delay it because they, they don't want to go forward. Got to become landmark. That yeah. The plans need to change. So, um, so that that that's an obvious concern and consideration. And if we just voted no without any conditions, we're not really emphasizing that point. I'll say the other conditions too were again, it, this is a compromise resolution um, for folks who were uh, sensitive to the applicant's concerns, real concerns about economics of this, about what it might offer to the community to have. A nice looking building, you know, Deutsche Bank did leave, not because Deutsche Bank failed, Deutsche Bank moved uptown to the Time Warner Center. Um, and they left after reportedly from the applicant, reportedly discussions that they just they wanted to stay in the building, but they just couldn't get it all together because it needed to be renovated and blah blah blah. Um, so I think these conditions are are reasonable. Okay. They, they represent the sense of the community. All right, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Mark, you were at committee, so right? What, no, you could do, you could, what you can do is take the condition, put it as a first, therefore be resolved, and say uh, uh, CB1 cannot recommend uh, approval of uh, unless these are unless um, these are considered, and then uh, therefore be a further resolved. The last thing we can disapprove the application. That that's. From a land use perspective, that's two different decisions, and I think they're inconsistent. Um, yeah. you know, we think we need to yeah. have this world. Yeah. But so I agree with other people saying about how the conditions have to doesn't seem. Uh, but I, thank you, Jeff. Um, I, I I think the conditions are uh, important, but I, I'm I'm actually going to vote against the resolution. Uh, because it's this is a difficult one. It's difficult to balance preservation interests against economic vitality. And New York City, its entire history has been one of tearing down the old and building the new. Um, and it's sometimes shamefully, sometimes wonderfully. Um, now, as a matter of just personal preference, I'm not wild about postmodernist architecture. I never liked this. Pops. I used to work on Wall Street and I did not like going in there. I didn't enjoy the experience and 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 at least for a long period of time, I think most people shared that, that, that view. And I think to free now I know historians saying, well, 
back in the old days. We all thought it was ugly back then, but look how quaint it is. So let's keep it. So we remind ourselves of what people thought back then. And some people have grown to like it. Um, so I, I think there is a real problem with the vitality, vitality of the office market of that building in particular. It is vacant. I hate to hamstring the, the resurrection of the vitality of that building okay. with something that I actually don't find aesthetically yeah. pleasing. Well, that's so, it. Remember, we want to keep this short. Sorry. We still have more to do, and we need to be out here in 28 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just want to that. comment that a great amount of research has been done by serious professional architects and planners who understand this, who understand the history and understand today and tomorrow, and it has nothing to do with personal preferences. And I would like everyone here to please understand that we represent a whole community, not our personal preferences. I want to make okay. uh, You have not been recognized, Mr. Herman. <laughs> Alice first, and then you, Mr. Arnon, and don't make me use the map. I'm going to counter you on this, Jeff. I feel really strongly against that point in so far as saying what I said earlier, that two of the greatest interior landmarks interiors in New York City are done by the exact same architects who right. get brushed in globe in New York City. Yeah. That is the Ford Foundation, which I advise every one of you to go into. 1963 and the ambassador grill and the United Nations lobby in the 1970s. Um, these are phenomenal spaces. And, and the fact is, if the owner would understand that they've got a jewel, they have a tourist destination in their hands and simply make that jewel shine again, that is money in the bank. And for the entire community, not just for the owner. That's Thank you. Yay. Okay. I know I spoke before, but I, I would suggest that the uh, what is what is labeled number eight here be much stronger. I'm going to point out that the only Frank Lloyd Wright in the interior, other than the Guggenheim, was one day before scheduled. That was the Mercedes Benz showroom on 58th and Park Avenue. The day before it was to be calendared. The new owner came in and completely smashed it, and that's legal because the calendar wasn't posted yet. Um, that's what will happen here. So I think we should say that we will not we will not consider any further matters regarding this renovation until and unless it is calendared. Not, not unless until it is calendared and reviewed by LDC. Now we suggest to refer. So DCP should should not. Further consider this application until such time. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, second. Second. I like that change. Okay. There we I'm go. Assuming you like so, that change. Hold the second in the round. So we we'll it. Uh, All right. So we're going to roll by affirmation on this as well. Hands up if you. So we can call the vote just like we did earlier. So everyone in no, not falls left. Um. So this is. Are there any abstention? Uh, are there any opposition? Are there any no's? No. Say your name for the record, please. Anna Galloway. Seltzer, no. Okay. Saying no other no's, either online or in the room. Are there any abstentions? Saying no abstentions, are there any recusals? Motion passes. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks. All righty. Um, and thank you, everybody. Uh, the Fulton Stall Market came and gave us summer update. Uh, we're, we're, we'll hope they get there some kind of market set up before the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. That's going to be nice. Elizabeth. Uh, okay, not much to report here. Still vacant. It's still in the um, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. A bunch of interviews next week. <laughs> the only thing is we actually raised the salary rate a little bit this afternoon. Um, we raised it because um, this, there's another community board in Brooklyn that actually is also posted for a district manager. We want to be competitive with them, and they have a slightly higher salary than what we had by a couple thousand dollars. So we break it's just the range. No, I mean, is it appropriate to say that one? What? Is it appropriate to say the salary range now? Yeah. It'll be posted online. Yeah. Online. Yeah. online. Everything gets posted. Um, and that's it. So we can move on to Alice. All right. Uh, so Unless anyone has any questions. I mean, that's it. No questions for personnel? 
Fantastic, Alice, you're up. Oh, you know, it was a two yeah. hour. It was a two hour presentation. You're up. Let's do it. Three minutes. Three minutes. That's it. You just go pick the slide. Just to, to say this, this is the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency Update. This is the entire peninsula of Lower Manhattan. Okay. So there are five fine. sections, and I'm just going to quickly go through the five IT reports. The good news is that the um, Mayor's Office of Climate and Environmental Justice will give a presentation public uh, meeting on this in September. So all of this will be seen again. Anyone who wants to see this, there's the YouTube, and also I will have make sure that it's posted on our website, the link to this presentation. So we don't have to go through every detail. Uh, basically, it's a time to think and make comments. We will write our resolution in the fall, so you have plenty of time to review it, both at this public hearing and Let's just go through a few slides. I'll show you the for an eye wash. Go ahead, just run through. You, this is the slide we've seen a thousand times. It was an update. Um, okay, they're in phase five. We finished phase four. There's the timing. I'm gonna just go five, through. six, and seven. Right. So we're in five. Go ahead. There's the, there's the the piece of property we're looking at. Um, go ahead. Um, the interesting here is it's been divided into three sort of areas. So we very have the multi-level waterfront park and the seaport piers. And one of the concerns that needs to be addressed and that they're well aware of, aware of is that the multi-level waterfront park is, seems to, to us to be essentially a ferry terminal. So there is a hope that perhaps with using the gut the the uh, the the Coast Guard site, thank you. Um, that that could open up more space here at the northern end and get rid of some of these ferry terminals and move them over. And one other thing is that the maritime, the Battery Maritime Terminal will no longer receive ferries. Will no longer be something that is going to have boats connected to it. So there was some discussion of whether we just move that on terra firma and again opened up more land, more waterfront for these other ferry boats that fear less. Anyway, lots of ideas were filtered through. Interesting thoughts and more to come. Go ahead. And there are we will share links that you can. And so this comments. this is the battery. What we're talking about, you can see that this built this building no longer on the right. You're looking at the waterfront. You no longer have a waterfront building, right? You have this esplanade. So obviously, food for thought is maybe whether that really belongs there anymore. Okay, moving on. Next. Okay, that's the battery maritime, and you can see more closely. Here's Pier 11. That's now increased from tremendously the number of boats that will go on there. Um, and you can see that one of the things we, we spoke about was, um, you know, this idea that it's a little bit narrow, right? This park, and there's really no area really for recreation. And we're hopeful that the, is there some way to accommodate for more green area? And um, it's kind of a path of circulation um, rather than a path of recreation. Designed for queuing to the ferries yeah. and access to all the ferries. So we 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 draw all the stuff and they're definitely aware of this and the, the designers are very sensitive to a lot of these issues. Very hard problem needless to say. Okay, you're seeing the ferry terminal stop there with the terminal building and what that'll be like potentially. Next slide. Uh phase five looking at opportunities to get close to the water. But we all raised the point at the juncture where the BM, uh, the, 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 the Brooklyn, the Montgomery and the Lower Manhattan Coastal go joined and that we have to really analyze that. And that's in, certainly in terms of Gotham Park and Rosa spoke to that, of course. Next slide. And using the new market site as a recreational. Yeah, site. that was highlighted. And thank you, Michael Kramer, for having really made sure that was underlined. Um, then they spoke a little bit about the carbon footprint and then what they were going to do in terms of sustainability, and that was reviewed. Next slide. Implementation where they're at with the regulatory construction funding and financing and details about that. A little bit early in the game and what's coming next. And you'll see that this is the public open house where hopefully everyone can attend. And then we had a, a short presentation by the battery park. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak about the battery coastal resilience, which showed us nothing new, or the the Montgomery Brooklyn Bridge because it's out of our area. So we we looked at Northwest Battery Park City. These are the reaches. All of you were aware. Okay, so this is 
what we got, we got three slides only on this. So clearly there has to be a lot more. We've only had one public meeting on each reach, uh, one public workshop to be specific. And we have argued that, and I think that we have already has occurred. Them. So we need much more. We have, oh, I think around 20 on reach eight, which is the Wagner Park. So we feel that one versus 20 or something like that doesn't quite do it. And we're looking forward to seeing more and more holistically um, that that whole thing is looked at, not just in terms of reach by reach, which was a good suggestion made by and um, uh, Jeff actually. Um, and I think that's the second slide we were shown. And here's the third, I think the last slide, next slide is well, those are the three slides that showed up on the, the entire park. So we obviously have more to go on that. And this all began when we lost the design build bid for us. So we're now just a design build. So things are expedited, understandably, but we're really looking not to slow things down, but to see more and quickly. So that's what we're going to be doing in September. And the authority very willingly has agreed to do that. So that's it. Next slide. I think that's it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's Wagner Park today, you know, and what's going on, which uh, I didn't realize the thank you. Um, just well, the covered. That's it. Next slide. Just a quick question. Mimi has a question. Yep. Uh, what, what's going to happen to the helicopter? Unfortunately, yeah. 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 we have gone over to civilian times. Can it move? We can't not move. They have to leave it there. Yeah. Regulatory yeah. reasons. That yeah. has to be yeah. security yeah. and regulate. We they just yeah. absolutely yeah. think the federal government will not let them move it. It's so obvious. We agree. Everyone agrees. It could go with any other place in New York City wide there, but no, it but stay there. There are two potentials that they are looking at. They are looking at green infrastructure for the helicopters that go, um, the new kinds of helicopters, and that will be in the next uh, state, you know, RFP that they put out um, versus the temporary one, and they are talking blue highways to attach to that pier when next in the heliport. Hmm. When nature. Yeah. I think the um, one thing that I heard that was kind of new and we've known before that the five I see work plan doesn't have any money right now um, to build it. They, you know, we've, they've always told us they're going to have to look for creative ways to raise the money because it's going to be in the billions to fix that. And I think for the first time, Jordan didn't really say it directly, but it is going to be um, in, in the same type of application from the government for the hat study, which for us, the hat study always means like north of the battery park. Uh, project and that goes up to Tribeca and up the Hudson River Park. So I think for the first time ever, I I raised the question. And I think nobody knows the answer. Is that will this five day seaport plan be in competition with the HAP study? And clearly, the five day seaport plan has been, you know, envisioned and refined, and it's still going to be, you know, going through process. And, and I encourage everyone to come in September. But um, the other thing that we're all concerned about is in our community board, there is no such equivalent plan for um, North Tribeca. So, um, you know, that is just, uh, you know, and all of this takes place when Congress approves it. What's the, it's, it's over. 2028 yeah. maybe yeah. or whenever. Yeah, I mean, that's so, 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 so all along in the short of it is come to the meetings in the fall. There will be lots of them. Please, we're, if you need a link, ask the office. We'll share them. Get, catch up and speak up because that's what we need. Okay. All right. Let's hit our last committee at 945. It is Mr. Goldstein. Take us, us home. Take us home. Okay. Let's get going. Okay. Actually, we covered. Uh, to get started, two of the major issues uh, down here in Community Board One. The first was the opening of our Performing Arts Center, which has been in the making since the devastation of the World Trade Center at 9/11. As you know, um, you know, with that devastation, this Community Board led the effort to rebuild. And uh, part of that effort was to get, uh, you know, a, a performing arts center built down here. We devoted a lot of energy and effort on that, and it wasn't easy. There was a lot of pushback. There was a lot of uh, entities that didn't really support us on that, but 
lo and behold, it's opening September 26th, next, next month. We had three of the leaders of that come down. We had Jenna Christoph, uh, Chris Fonte, uh, Director of Civic Alliances. We had Bill Roush, Artistic Director, and Jim Connors, Director of Operations. And they gave a very lively and very enthusiastic uh, presentation to <laughs> us about how they're going to present very exciting sounding uh, music, theater, and dance performances seven days a week. They'll have free programming for the community. They'll have memberships that begin at $10. Ticket prices start at $30. Memberships are now available. $10 for the inaugural season. Members uh, receive early access to tickets and other perks. They'll have family programmings that will occur on Saturdays. Uh, the uh, musical Cats will be one of their early productions. Uh, their website is filled with lots of information. So if you want to find out more about all the shows and all the productions, go to Herman Performing Arts Center and you'll see and hear all about it. Second, we learned a lot more about the Climate Center at Governor's Island. Again, we heard from all the leaders. Claire Newman, president and CEO of the Trust for Governance Island, was with us. Uh, Sarah Kratheim, uh, senior VP for Public Affairs. We had Kevin Reed. He was from Stony Brook. He's a professor and scientist who's overseeing construction of the campus uh, center there. We had Andrew Winters, Director of Capital Projects and Planning for the Center. We had someone named Colin Coop from Skidmore Owings, Merrill. So we had quite a presentation from all these experts who really, you know, went into quite a bit of detail about their plans. Uh, I think Laura does, but I don't see anything coming up. They you gotta say Lauren's slide. Nope. Nope, no slides. Okay. Oh, sorry about sorry. that. Sorry. But you know what? That's a good point for people to watch the YouTube video. And just a warning that security's already passed the door three times, giving me the same time. Right. All right. Well, then let me just give you the highlights. The highlights are that uh, groundbreaking is scheduled to take place in 2025. Ribbon cutting, in other words, when they expect to be completed, is 2028. We're supposed to get thrown in with this whole plan is four and a half acres of open space for the public, which we weren't expecting. And they said they would work with us on how to program that space. They said 500 post-secondary students would be able to utilize the climate center. And some of them would be living on Governor's Island. And they talked quite a bit about the building that they were building. They said the 400,000 square foot building is well beyond state of the art and could be the most energy efficient building in the city of New York. And uh, you know, generally, they got a pretty warm reception from the group uh, of our committee. You know, I was actually pretty surprised that they were as well received as they were. All right. Let me move on because we spent quite a bit of the meeting talking about the third item, which was Elizabeth Ferber Poets in the Park project. Okay, we heard from the Parks Department and from uh, Linda Jacobs, Washington yeah. Street Historical Society. Okay, this item uh, originally came to our committee back in March of 2023. And uh, when it came before the committee at that point, it was not voted on because there were quite a few concerns at the committee because members uh, found the design was a little overwhelming and asked the artists to rework the project and return to the committee and to the community board 
before presenting it to the Public Design Commission. <laughs> so that's what they did. They came back to the committee at this meeting in July. So let me just back up a little bit, and that's where the resolution starts. <laughs> it, Elizabeth Burger Park was open back in April of 2021, and it was a park that was, you know, it's a 29,000 square foot, uh, 29,000 square foot park named for Elizabeth Berger that some of you know her. She was a member of this community board. She was a leader downtown for many years. She led the PTAs down here. She led the downtown alliance. She unfortunately passed away from cancer at a young age. She was a leader downtown. Anyway, it was a park that, uh, you know, that was built to serve our community. It, it, had, it was a traditional park with grass lawns, trees, landscaping, seating, and paved pathways. And, um, it was also built in a community that formerly was home to the little Syrian community that had thousands and thousands of Lebanese and Syrian immigrants that dominated that area between 1880 and 1940 and settled in that area of Washington between Washington Street and Greenwich Street from the Battery to Liberty Street. And they had uh, very active warehouses, stores, restaurants, print shops, cafes, and tenement houses. I'm sorry, since we skipped over a fact for other resolutions, is it possible to go straight to that there will be resolved? Yes. Do we have an idea? Okay, so the, the, the bottom line is that there there is support and there's strong support for recognizing the Lithuanian community in amongst the community board, but there is also concern that the proposal that was put on the table, you know, after the park was built for the community and very few people knew about, uh, you know, this large scale art piece. And one thing that the uh, public found and the committee found startling was that this is a permanent art piece. You know, most public art is temporary. It stays there for a number of months and then it, it comes down. This is a piece of art that is supposed to be permanent. So some people, a lot of people who, again, want to recognize the Little Serene community is somewhat concerned that, you know, this would set a precedent. Do we want to just have the city be able to come into our parks and just declare on their own that they could come in and take over any percentage of these parts and make them into, you know, artwork for any purpose. So that's why we had right. this six to four vote and it was a compromise, very honestly. Okay. Okay. Let's, I see hands up. Let's do okay. Mariana, Susan, Morton, and then, uh, Eric, you spoke on the last night. Please let the other three go first. And then I'll get to you in more. Mariama? So, as we, as we heard from um, some of the guests that are still here and from Todd Pond online, this has been something that the immediate community, including actual residents of Washington Street, not just throughout the community board, have been working on for over a decade before the park was established as it is today. And so the community. Um, has come back and, and asked Pat and I to um, just note some, some changes they'd like to see in the resolution before we um, consider voting on it. And so I just have those changes um, I, I mentioned earlier um, and you asked me that I wait until now. So, um, whereas number four, 
while large scale is mentioned in other areas of the resolution, they'd like it removed from there. That's just the first the thing. Fourth whereas, the fourth whereas. There is Poets in the Park is a large. permanent public art installation is the way they'd like that to read. Um, then they go to whereas number seven, adding some before members. Some members taking out who are troubled by elements of this project that include adding permanently installed large sculptural pieces now and then taking out striking that will now permanently interfere with the ability of the people to enjoy sections of the park, including landscape areas of and benches they feel should be protected and preserved here in Lower Manhattan and not removed from an area in need of more open space. We want all of that stricken. Uh, actually, but if it reflects some of the members. Of well, they, well, that, well, it doesn't say some members. They, add, they so want to add the word some. Some, but some. that that's only some. everything else in place because yeah. it reflects the, the concerns of some of the members of the community. Okay. Then they move to be it resolved, be it fully resolved number two. It is true that it reflects some of the members of the community because there are members of the community who have been here forever. There are members of the community who are new. There are members of the community at the schools. So it is accurate if you say some. There's going to be some members. That's the only thing that changes yes. is adding the word some. Okay. Uh, be it further resolved, number two, they want to add in front of CB1 urges. Some members of CB1 urge that PDC works with the artist uh, to see if you can mitigate the impact of large sculptural pieces and then strike the rest so that people can enjoy the natural features. I don't accept no. all these changes. No, that, that I'm sorry. Unfortunately, changes the nature these of the are too many changes. So at this point, you'd have to take it, you'd have to vote to table it and put it back if that's kind of the direction. Mm -hmm. Some of it I, I, I understand. Your picture? Uh, uh, Susan? Well, can we vote to table it? Because I think we don't have, uh, 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 I have a sense that it is not encroaching on everything and that it still allows for people to sit and have yeah. quiet aspect. Of, of, it was scaled back. Uh, uh, yes. and yeah, but so I would move to table it so that we could Second, come up. So, okay, so here's the thing. Uh -huh. To move to table is a vote in itself. Okay. So this will be, if it passes, a roll call vote. But you just be aware that they may go to these public parklets, but the, the, PC with the that, PTC, with that and then we'll have no roll at all. So we have a time to do a no vote. Well, we should ask the parks department if they're going to hold back. They have already the held back. They, they presented last month, they came back again. So. I doubt they're going to just. Keep waiting. But well, I don't think they're going to move have been so quickly. Parts. I think we may have till September, and we have to come up with something. I mean, I, I would. We, uh, 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 they don't move that. There's no guarantee. Unfortunately, we're in a situation. I know there's no. Stop, 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 stop. Let some other people talk. All right, let's stop. Around. We are in a situation, Susan. That this is July. We are off in August. We do not have a guarantee that Parks Department won't move forward. They would like to move forward to be able to do this before it gets cold. So there's no guarantee. Yeah. A motion to table has been made. It has been seconded. It must be voted on. Correct, Mr. Parliamentarian? It can't be debated. Yeah. This Unless it's withdrawn. <laughs> I'm now withdrawn. It is not withdrawn. So we are doing a roll call vote on motion to table, understanding that they may move on without us. Yeah, I mean, it's not about the roll call. Like I said, is there a picture yeah. anywhere? Uh, Is there a picture? Uh, you have my phone on. Thank you. <laughs> we still have people from the Parks Department online, so please let us ask them because they are online. There if they are. can give us an answer. Great. Because if they can, I'll lose them. And while you look, here's your slide. I see it. There's not a slide. You uh, do you have a slide from the meeting? So I'm sorry that you could potentially do this. Who's here from Parkstone? Hi, I'm Jeff. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. 
Jennifer, can you tell us if you can wait for us to have a discussion and pass a resolution in September? Um, I mean, technically we can. To be honest, we would really like to move forward with a submission um, in uh, this month, just given the amount of time that we've been putting into the project. Um, and I guess I, I, some of the my question, I guess, in terms of whether there are specific questions for us that I can answer tonight that might help resolve some of the confusion or question. Um, one thing I would like to note in terms of the, the history of this site and just some of the concerns that were just raised in terms of like setting a precedent that parks would come into any park and take it over. Um, I'd like to just point out that before this park was even a park, that it was designed with the intention of having a permanent artwork there. Um, it was actually the community the surrounding community that asked us to include a permanent artwork. And so with the cooperation with CB1, who sat on the advisory panel to select the artist in 2017, before the park was even designed, you know, this was already in the works. It got delayed, unfortunately, due to COVID. Um, the park, because it was considered like um, necessary work, was allowed to continue on. You know, parks workers kept continuing. The city was no longer providing funding or stipends to artists, no contracts to artists. So this project was just strictly put on hold. So unfortunately, while we ideally wanted the artist and the designer to work in tandem and open simultaneously, that was not possible due to COVID. Um, so now the art, now that you know COVID has more or less um, resolved and we're kind of back to, to standard work, the artist must now respond to a design park that already exists. Um, also speaking in terms of, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, in terms of large scale, I'd like to just point out that this, um, the two set, uh, two mosaics that will be the seat backs of the existing stone seat walls um, are only about a foot and a half higher than the seat walls. This sculpture itself, its highest point is seven feet tall, which is, you know, uh, just slightly larger than the average human. Um, it also is very narrow, so it won't disrupt the northwest south or excuse me, north south um, site views. And it is permeable. You know, you will be able to see it. It's not a solid wall um, and it's placed within a planting bed. We're actually not displacing any plants. We're actually not taking away any benches from the park. We're actually providing more support for those seat walls that already exist and people might find uncomfortable because there is no back. Um, so we actually see this as an enhancement to the site. We're not taking away any of the park's amenities or. I got her. Jennifer, we muted you. I'm sorry. I appreciate, but we cannot relitigate the entire Can presentation. But, no, because we are withdraw. in the middle of an withdraw. action. Put your eyes withdraw. It has been withdrawn. I withdraw. So here's Thank a key you. question. Who from community board one was on that 2017 panel? I, I don't know of anyone from the community. She just made a, a, a key we, point. We can ask her. Well, I'm that's what I'm, I'd love to know because I'm not aware that anyone from the community was represented. If it was Todd Vine, that's not the community. Hi, um, so I, I'll have to ask the Department of Cultural Affairs who ran the um, meeting exactly which individual it was. Um, it that individual, it just it says a you know member of Community Board One was on the agenda as a participant in the meetings. Um, it also has the local elected officials. Um, Todd was uh, in his capacity of as uh, Washington Street at that time, so he wouldn't have been the community board member. Do we, yeah, we, I mean, we don't have anyone that we are aware the current board of 2023. We don't know who was appointed and who spoke for CB1. Uh, that could be part and parcel of the problems that we're running up against here. Um, so, but thank you for that, Jennifer. If you can come back to us now, stop for the business of the board. The motion was made. The motion was seconded. The motion is now rescinded. So we are back to considering the resolution 
Yeah. As it sits. Can okay. I, once, no, can I, no, no, you've already gone once. Okay, Paul. Yes. We need to address some of the things that Mariama brought up. Okay. In some of it, it is absolutely easy and reflective. Where you look at the whereas at the bottom of the first page, there continue to be some member trouble. And that reflects the accuracy of what has happened. But Tammy, this is important clarification. The reason the community wanted to correct some of it and feel that it's inaccuracies is because when, what you were able to see from the picture is that this, this sculpture does not impede anything. Right. And that's all throughout the resolution. That's why they're viewing it as an inaccuracy. Right. That's all I wanted to say. Yes. Well, correct. I think believing the words large scale is important. Look at it's so not that large. I yes. Stop. You are not recognized to speak. Please do not cross off. We can't get out of the room with any kind of moving this forward. So, I'm Mary, sorry. you are done with your comments. I got that. I, I, I like to let other people I speak. I will let other people speak. Paul, please wait. The other question, whether you call it large scale or not, is subjective. We could potentially take that out and say, it is a permanent public art installation and leave it as that. All right. Bruce. I was at the presentation, the first go round, and I had some concerns about the scale, but I want to say after all this discussion that number one, this community wanted what was left of the, the original uh, little serious, little serious. Area, Stop serious interrupting uh, uh, neighborhood landmark and the LPC acknowledged one building, so they didn't get that. This site, prior to this, we're talking about seating. This was the most dangerous intersection. You couldn't even look at it without losing a leg. Forget about seating. Right. The Queen, the, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, the, the parking lot. Your yeah. point. So this is, this is a huge improvement in terms of sitting right. and enjoying. So I, I think we're over, we're over exercising this okay. question. Point me, Eric. Yeah. And then Mark, I, and then I was in the committee and I voted yes for this. Yes, this is the second time that they came back to us and they made some changes. And then also it's functional, meaning that this part of the artwork can actually sit on it. So the grassy area, we're not losing any any space that we could previously use. So it does pay tribute, but it doesn't interfere with the enjoyment of the park. Thank you, Eric. Mark. What is the writing? On there, Mark, we will have to. We will send you the links for the presentation. You can go through the presentation. When there was a, a, I am not relitigating that here. And there was signage, and they went through the virtual reality program that goes with it. There's a lot of details. I'm happy to send that to you and have Onesh and the team forward the entire presentation. Yes, uh, uh, not to repeat, I agree with what Eric said. So I just want to ask you, Tammy and Paul. If I'm for this, because I don't see it impeding, if I don't see it impeding, uh, uh, taking up space for people walking or sitting, then how would I vote? If, would I vote for this? Yes, yes, yes. We recommend that the PDC approve the proposed. Yeah. We, we, okay. we, we recommend it. Because I'm saying we strongly urge us to be careful and moving like Correct, that. Correct, because that's a comment on okay. public Future. space in Future. general. Future. Yes. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, question. Second. Quiet down. Stay quiet throughout the whole roll call. I can't deal with what we did last time. Thank you. Thank you. Blank. Yes. Thank you. Cameron. Yes. Thank you. Giselle. Yes. Thank you. Chapman. Yes. Thank you. Sharpudian. Got it. Cole. Yes. Thank you. Kucha. Yes. Thank you. Curtis. No. Thank you. Airman. Yes. Thank you. Flores. Flores. Yes. Thank you. Maybe one, yes. Uh, Forsberg. Forsberg, yes. Thank you. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes.
No one Thank leaves you. the room yep. yet. Chanel. Uh, Learner. So many. Learner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lyon. Yes. Thank you. Meltzer. Yes. Thank you. Minsley. No. Thank you. Moore. Yes. Thank you. Bushikori. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Robinson. See you in September. Yeah, thank you. It's <laughs> like the boss is online. Thank you. Here, thank you. Star, yes. Did you get that? Yes. Yeah, there, yes. Thank you. Thompson, thank you. You, yes. Thank you. Zelter. Thank you. It passes. Okay, I need thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned at 10 12. We, we need your help. All the chairs seem to be stacked that are not at this table. They want the form out of this table.